Here we go, Barflies. Welcome to the Barfly Tailgate Show. You already know it's live. It's done by Barflies, for Barflies, and all the other Bears fans out there. Welcome back, boys. You know, nice little break. You know, just kick back and and chill and you know and whatever. Just talk a lot of shit to each other and and you know and and give a little break from this thing. Uh, we're here to talk about the draft. You know, we're gonna throw out, throw some shit against the wall, see what sticks, and uh, and you know get 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 the updates and everything going on. Let's start this thing off with Mr. Ryan Badgley, Badge of Honor, Badge. What's up, dude? Yo, Bobby Bombs, AC, Big Mike, everybody in the house, KB, prepping to jump in here soon. Man, it's it was nice, fellas, to, you know, we, we started, what, training camp last season, went all the way through, through the Super Bowl, did a couple extra weeks. Yeah, it was yeah. nice to have a, a little breather there, but now it's ramping up, it's draft time, uh, you know, excited to talk about our mocks. And, uh, you know, just kick it with you guys. It's been a little bit, you know, I know we, we chatted through text and, and whatnot a little bit here and there, but, uh, man, it's, it's great to be back and, uh, you know, decked out in some new bar room <laughs> swag, baby, check out that swag shop. I mean, what can't you get in this swag shop? Our man, Mike, putting it all together. Damn. It's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Absolutely. We got Speedos. Speedos are lined up <laughs> next. So, Badge, I know you're looking forward to the summer. I got you covered, I might bro. need two sewn together to fucking get in it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> a, nice, a nice little banana hammock. <laughs> next, we got Mr. Mike Schaefer. Mike, what's up, man? New office. Who this? Uh, I'm go. on a new, uh, new location today. Uh, spending a little time at, uh, at the actual work office today. But, boy, have I missed you guys. Uh, it's been pretty boring these last few Sundays, just thinking about the draft. So excited to be back with y'all and, uh, weather warming up, uh, as we get closer to uh, draft day, I know we got a lot of topics to cover today. Excited to be here, boys. <laughs> Absolutely, man. 4,000 Clover just said we should open the show with the boys are back in town. <laughs> I think we actually did that a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, I think we actually used that a few times. But then there's all this copyright shit, Clovers, and then the yep. half the show gets muted because people, you know, whatever, get all angry and shit. Last but not least, we got the bearded Bears fan, Mr. Aaron Current. What's up, dude? What it do, baby? Good to be back. <laughs> Uh, the weather's starting to turn. You know, I'll give y'all a, a little Kentucky update. Get it. Uh, nice and warm, but the allergies are kicking my ass. Uh, mm. I'll be I'll be cutting grass after the show today. Um, try to set up a little something behind <clears throat> me. I got my Kentucky season tickets, so that's what I'll be doing this Saturday in the fall, and then Sunday, of course, to be with you fellas. Uh, I, I'm I'm pumped. It feels like Christmas coming around. I I love draft season. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, hopefully we can get everybody back in the stadiums this year. I mean, <laughs> at least, you know, some sort of attendance um, right. and get things going. But I have a feeling, you know, it's going to it's going to uh, it's going to pick up for sure, man. Um, I wonder how many of these like, you know, now that you said it, and I know it's totally off of anything, but I wonder how many season ticket holders are have given up given up their season tickets or their spots because of either the fear of COVID or not wanting to, uh, to whatever. So now might be the time to get yourself your name on the list. Cause who knows how, uh, how quick that thing is going. All right. Uh, um, I, think, all right. I, think, Go ahead, Mike. I was just gonna say, I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens. If they open this thing up, there are people that are going to be a little bit leery, but it, there's also going to be a lot of people that hadn't had access to tickets in the past that now do. So like with baseball right now, you see price for Cubs tickets is like insane. $200 just to Jesus. get in a building in some cases yeah. for certain games. So it's this weird dynamic. It's all going to co come down to how many people do they have let back into the stadium. But yeah, if you're not on the list today, you should be on the list because you just never know. Uh, something can happen. You get in there. Uh, it is my most prized possession. <laughs> the season tickets in. It, it, my dad and I actually share it. So it's a PSL. So we have yeah. the rights to the tickets. And he always fucks with me every year <laughs> and says, hey, 
I'm throwing the, the I, I saw I, they're going for like 20 grand. I'm putting them up and I'm like, hell no, there's no price. There is no price that we will put on those PSLs. So, hey, if you, like I said, if you're not on the list, get on that list today. If they get on the list, they can hang out in South Lot with you, bro. Amen. Let's go. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm the days. I'd rather be tailgating. Oh, yeah. I am tailgating. I'm barfly tailgating. But, hey. yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, let's kick this thing off, man. Let's let's start off with, uh, before we get into mocks, let's start off with, uh, uh, you know, CP. Oh, uh, I almost said CP3 because of all the basketball gambling I've been doing. Um, <laughs> let's start off with Cordero Patterson. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, First, you got guy. Mr. Ryan, hey. KB, old Kirkland Villains popping in. What's up, man? What's going on, fellas, man? Having, having, having computer issues, man. That's what happens when you don't start your stuff up for like a month. It's, it's like <laughs> going through a million restarts. I'm like, bro, what, what, what's going on? So on the phone, man, got to do it this way. That's all right, man. Sounds good. We're going to kick this thing off, man. We're getting started already. So let's throw in some a little Cordero Patterson badge. I'm going to start this thing off with you, man. Uh, they the Bears have come out and said that they're not they're not going to re-sign him. Um, they're going to basically let him let him walk. Uh, he said, you know, I'm going to miss all my guys in Chicago or something like that. He put out on Twitter. Uh, what's your thoughts on on CP no longer in the building? Oh, let me get my. Uh... <laughs> comment thread up here because i'm probably gonna get fucking ethered i love cordero patterson uh he's a rah-rah guy he is a you know hype up guy uh he's a recruiter um but outside of that what the fuck did he do here in all honesty i mean uh he returned what one maybe two kickoffs for a touchdown um he played running back when our offensive line was in shambles um he is a gimmick guy which is what uh when he first came here everybody thought teams weren't caught off guard by him in the shitty offense that this Matt Nagy continues to put out every season so to me it's not a huge loss um in my eyes um I I think you know I like Cordero Patterson but as far as his time here in Chicago there wasn't enough. He just didn't do enough for me to warrant him coming back here. Did I want him back here? Absolutely. Uh, just because of the type of person that he is. Um, he was great in um, the return game. Also as a gunner, I thought he was fantastic. But there's, you can find those guys in, in other places for much less money than what, what he was coveting. So, you know, CP, appreciate everything here, man. Like, awesome, but I- I'm totally okay with with moving on from him. Yeah, I, I am too. Good. I was I was just gonna say I, I'm not gonna go quite as bold as Badge with uh, with the take, but just a few weeks ago, I mean, I, I said it. You know, I I think a guy like CP, CP, I almost did the same thing as you, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> A guy like CP, it's a luxury addition in this team with, with the cap situation that we're in right now. We don't have the ability to 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 pay top dollar for a return specialist. Yeah. He was, though, Badge, at times last season, he was our MVP. I mean, there were games. I mean, if he returns uh, a, a kickoff or a touchdown, like there were a couple games where that, that could be a make or break. I think there's three or four games probably throughout the season that he can win for you. So – and, and, and it's not saying much for the team around him to say that the kick returner is your MVP, but at times I think he was. But again, you know, was he going to take $3 million for one year to stay? Probably not. I mean, the Bears were going to have to pay more to keep him. I don't think you give a guy like that a pay cut, um, you know, so Atlanta gets a, a bargain for him. But uh, I'm with yeah. you, man. I mean, I said it a few weeks ago as an unpopular opinion that, hey, you got to you got to make some uh, sacrifices to uh, bring in players and to pay other players. And I thought he was one where we'd have to make it. I love the guy. And he was, like I said, at times the MVP, but I'm yeah, good without with a doubt. Yeah, And I think, I think there was times where he was the guy that was getting the ball downfield, you know, like when we mm-hmm. seemed to kind of go to him at certain times, he was like the only one um, 
producing, but just the consistency and whether or not it's CP, it might be more naggy, you know, it's the right, consistency right. of what he was used and what he was asked to do. Like some days he's asked to be a running back. Other days he's asked to yeah. fucking like he lined up at tight end last year, you know, and yeah, then yeah. like wide receiver running back. Like when you like, what is it? Jack of all trades, master of none. Like when you try to put this dude, whatever, I think that like, it was great to have him. I think his energy, like Badge is saying, is great. I love the how about them bears after the wins. You know, that was mm -hmm. like the – I won't say it took Club Dub's place this year, but it was the perfect kind of uh, after game piece that everybody was waiting for, you know. And, I mean, you even see millions of people come out and, and mock the video and, and start doing it the same. Um, so, uh, yeah, he was a good spot, but I don't know. I, I think he would have demanded more here, and this isn't a place – Right now, the the Bears organization, although yeah, they've been they've done playoffs what two out of the last three years, but this isn't an organization that you could be like we're on the cusp. Like, is, can you like we want you to resign for this much, and we're we're going like we're on the cusp. So he just you know he bounces out and and goes where where the money's going to be. Yeah, um, well, don't blame me. I, thought the, uh, I yeah. thought the one year three million looked bad on us. If if he would have took that here. In any other year other than this one, I would pay it in a heartbeat for our for yeah. for the best kick returner in the league. Let's let's not beat around the bush on that. There's there's um the things that he can do and and again you guys touched on it with maybe it's him, maybe it's Nagy. Yeah. The things that this guy can do, you can move him around your formation and your offense. That's that helps out your your depth chart. You don't have to pay is many well, yeah. people that's, yeah, like one of, that's one of the we, biggest we, bonuses about cp though because like no matter who gets hurt on the offense outside of the offensive lineman right no matter who gets hurt you have a guy like yeah. i have a guy who can play running back i have a guy who can play wide receiver you know i have a guy who's who's lined up at tight end you know not not that he's going to be there totally right but you have a guy who kind of fits in everywhere um, for three million, is it worth it? Probably, but I I honestly don't think that that's what he but was. But this is a guy, for. two guys who is taking carries away from David Montgomery, your number one running back, who's breaking off you know a 12, 14 yard gain and then being fucking substituted for yes. Cordell Patterson to come yeah. in and play running back. And and I get it, Tariq Holmes, that you know I I totally understand it. But this is also a guy who. He's not a full time ride receiver because he can't run the fucking route tree. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, well, he, he he's good in in certain things. There's reasons why it took this long for him to get signed. And but do you really I, do you, you really think that CP out of the building changes the way that Nagy pulls Montgomery out of the game? No, it's just going to be. Yeah, it's, that shit's yeah. still gonna happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. I well, now it's I, gonna be I, I Artavius think, Pierce or Nall or yeah. you know whoever else. <laughs> and yeah. I think I think in today's NFL, you have to have that running back by committee. How many? The only place that I can think of right off the top of my head that goes with just one running back and always one running back is like the Titans with with Derrick Henry and maybe yeah. Kamara in New Orleans. But other than I don't that, know, you... Jeromey, I don't know, Jeremy. Nagy can fucking screw anything up. He can screw up wiping his ass. <laughs> I know. That's what I said. I said. I said Munoz. I said Mun Munoz just spoke too soon. There's yeah. gonna be. There's gonna be somebody in there that's ready to. That that he's gonna mess this up with, man, for sure. Um, all right. So I think the the grand thing is like, yeah, everybody kind of liked him. We liked him here, but nobody's gonna. Nobody's like totally distraught and upset that that cp's gone right not on this panel anyway if we yeah. to invite some folks from twitter on yeah i'm sure yeah. they'd fucking <laughs> i wouldn't well, know some, some people <laughs> act like we lost Allen robinson we didn't you know what i mean we didn't lose yeah. our number one we lost a, a gimmick guy who helps out your offense and does extra stuff the like i said my biggest issue is that he went to atlanta who in my opinion is a worse team and uh, the draft position tells you that. And he yeah. took $3 million to go there. And we lose – we have to replace a gunner. I think Cohen can come in as a kick returner. Or there's a guy in the draft that I like that's kind of a late-round pick we might be able to grab. Uh, Another Kentucky kid, huh? No, no, no. Oh, no, no. Uh, oh, not a Kentucky guy? 
Jalen Darden is a guy that I like a lot. He is a kick return, punt return, slot yeah. receiver guy that we might be able to grab with one of those four six round picks. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, let's let's move on to the other one. Uh, I, I haven't seen anything on it lately, but then again, um, I I mean, for those of you, I, I just haven't really been on Twitter. I kind of took I took a break from all the fucking toxicity, man, and I just. Uh, I mean, when when you read a Twitter post and you get pissed off for like more than fucking five minutes, I think it's I think it's time to like time put to that go. thing down. You know what I'm saying? Time and I was I was getting angry with people and shit, man. I don't even know just from reading, and I'm like, okay, I'm done. Like, let me let me chill out for a minute. Um, there was a lot of out to the mountains. He learned how yeah, to build a fire. He... Sabbatical. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, the other thing that we've seen before, and I haven't really heard anything on it lately. Maybe you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but the whole Miller. Uh, the rumors of Miller on the trade block, bear shopping him, trying to get you know whatever, whatever for him. Um, thoughts on Anthony Miller and the and the possibility that that he is on the trade block, and and what do you value his trade position? Let's start with Mister Ryan Kirkland Billings. Uh, man, from everything that I done read and what I believe, I, I feel like he might value at a fifth round pick if we do end up trading him, which I do believe he's really on the trade block. I mean, we said that as soon as he was thrown out the playoff game yeah. he he was gone uh but you know what I'm saying a lot of the rumors are saying that there are a lot of teams that are coveting him which is shocking but when you look at it if he's putting the right system somebody gets his head on straight you get a hell of a slot guy we we've always said Anthony Miller's had talent he's had the talent to be a number two the shit he he he's he's he could be a mini Antonio Brown yeah in all in all aspects so uh I'm feeling he's got the Brown. attitude <laughs> yeah, that, that's not that crazy. Uh, but man, you you got to look at that man. Hope hopefully he lands on the speed. He, he seemed like he was a good kid, man. And you know, sometimes it's like it's like you say you need to change the scenery. And being here, we don't develop people. So <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. Trade him to a team like the Patriots, who might covet somebody for a, for a slot position, or you know, maybe Tampa Bay. No. <laughs> That's a great point, KB. You we you you just hit the nail on the head with guys come here. We don't develop anybody. We don't develop Name anybody, man. <laughs> we drafted in I don't know shit. The history of the organization that's fucking amounted to shit. And right now, it's even worse. Yeah. It's even worse. Yeah. You've got guys that they've spent draft picks on, and they traded up for Anthony Miller, mm-hmm. and he ain't done shit. But punch a guy in the fucking face in a playoff game. Well, I mean, he started out. He started out great his rookie he year. Started out. Oh yeah, I mean, he started the, out great. The trade up looked yeah. like it paid off at that point, but you know. Yeah. Javon Wims, Riley Ridley. What? What's the problem in the wide receiver room? Is it the players? Is it the coaches? Like that? That's this organization in a fucking nutshell. Yeah. And I'm sorry to get. I, I haven't talked Bears in weeks, and and I apologize, but. Until these fucking morons in in the organization recognize that Matt Nagy isn't going to change this offense, his coaching staff isn't going to change shit because look at the last three re- years. Who's gotten better? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they, my they, gut they feel hasn't done it themselves. I, yeah. I was going to say but, David but, Montgomery. Yeah. Oh, that's the one though. player. Look at Mooney, though, right? Like, my gut is that this is a character thing. It's what are they doing when they're not at Palace Hall, when they're Mm -hmm. not practicing? Darnell Mooney, and granted, it's one video. It's one little clip on Twitter, but the guy's catching balls off a jugs machine in a a hallway of a hotel. And He he bought that jugs machine. Remember that? That was his first purchase purchase. when he got signed, yeah. So, I mean, but that's what I'm saying. And his performance, it it correlates, right? It's parallel. Mm Mm-hmm. You hear a lot of negative stuff about Miller. He's involved in a lot of negative stuff on Twitter. And again, I get it. It's Twitter and, you know, it it doesn't mean everything. But for me, guys like he's punching people on the field. Wims is punching people on the field. There's rumors that Ridley's kind of hanging out with those dudes. And maybe that explains why he's not on the field. Cut part ways with Miller, right? Get whatever we can get. Let's try to draft somebody that fits that mold. I think everywhere I'm hearing and listening, it sounds like wide receiver is a very high priority. Get somebody to replace him that can play that slot. That could be, you know, uh, the, the guy you can count on, and let's just rip the Band-Aid off and get rid of him. I was going to yeah, say, even if you look at it now, 
You know what I'm saying? Even if you look at it now, we already signed somebody that you can typically say might replace Miller yeah. and Goodwin. Yep. You know yeah. What I'm yeah. So yeah if he could, for, if he could stay on the field, and but, yeah. curls and you know, fucking deep outs <laughs> yeah. towards the sideline. Yeah, he'll be great I mean, for it. Yeah, it's also <laughs> it's also good for the medical staff to uh, yeah, yeah. Stay busy. To, to yeah keep their job fucking going. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't wish nothing bad on the dude. Three I'm and fourteen saying, guys, so I'm fucking sticking with no, it. No, but I, I told you <laughs> this is I'm this tired, is, man. Oh, Andy, oh, Andy's going above five hundred. This dude's gonna come yeah. in and be eight, eight, eight one, baby. Let's go. <laughs> eight, 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 eight one. one. <laughs> I don't know. I mean. I guess well before we run into the box, let me kick this thing over to Badge because I know I know uh, I don't want to go down the rabbit hole too much, but we're gonna go into Mox here in a little bit. But before we do that, let's introduce this week's Mister Badge of Honor uh, oh, from a yeah. from a very special member of the bar room. So Badge, go ahead, take it away, brother. Yeah, man. Uh, Ooh, yo, there he is, right there, my I'm guy, gone. man. We told you guys when we had him on the first time that. He would be back on to talk about just, I mean, I mean, I, I do the badge of honor, man, but this guy lives it like every day he's doing something in his community, you know, giving back and what he just did um, going over to another country, following his father's footsteps and making an impact there. Not even, not even here. And this, I mean, this guy, man, Tyler Ellis, the Gaines Report, man. Welcome back to the Barfly Tailgate Show. Congratulations on your badge of honor, brother. It's such an honor and a blessing to have you on here with us, man. To hear all about your experience following in your dad's footsteps, man. I knew you were gonna make me cry. That's why I have my glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, yeah, we talking beers. I'm like, yeah, we talking beers. I'm like, bet I'm ready. I'm ready. Then I'm like, oh no, keep the glasses on. Badge is gonna do it to you. <laughs> First of all, all 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 glory and praise to my heavenly father, Jesus Christ. I can't even like skip that. That is first and foremost, but the badge of honor. First of all, Barfly Tailgate Show, Bobby. <laughs> it's just like yo, it's hey, so hey. Bobby A C K B. My man, Mike, man, how y'all doing? Bad, you had me fired up, bro. You was talking well, about it. Sorry, man. It's been a while. <laughs> but um, so much to talk about. We get to Bears later. But um, I'm very, 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 very blessed to have seen an example of servitude from my father and from my mom, um, Trudy Jones, Amos Ellis. I grew up, Badge, watching my parents serve. My father... My father was the co-founder of the it's the Mombasa Kenya Relief Initiative, and um, they've been going over to Africa over for the for the last twenty plus years, um, pouring into the community. First, they used to bring back merchandise and help them with commerce and everything. When the government isn't really playing fair ball, there, my dad and his best friends that I really got the privilege to hang out with, my dad's best friends, which is another story. And together, um, it was just really awesome to see what they were already doing. And so um, I can't I won't take any credit. I was I'm very, very grateful to have been a blessing badge and to be able to be there. But from my dad, Amos Ellis, what he's left behind for my for myself, my brother, Josh, my brother, Jordan, my sister, Jasmine and my mom. I mean, we've we sponsored. We've helped sponsor children over there. They were taking um, electricity, water, um, health care supplies to schools over there. This this was so much. um bigger than a trip if you will honestly guys i will be going over there for the rest of my life and so um i don't want to go down any rabbit hole badge i kind of just want to listen to what you were oh man you're gonna make me cry now <laughs> how did you find this footage <laughs> how do we find it bro you had it posted all over instagram i was following <laughs> okay okay and so um and, and I think at this moment right here, we were talking about free agency was starting up and we people were talking about these millions of dollars being spent. And I'm literally at this school, those kids sitting right there, that's a classroom because the school is so overpopulated. And it's actually kind of sad because it's, it's supposed to be it was supposed to be a government funded school. And so wow. like these, these kids, when I walk into a classroom, Bobby. 
to see a fourth grader hungry, to see a third grader hungry with the head on the table is trying to be like, and then they walk a couple miles to get to the school. And some kids, they don't go home because they don't want to walk home and then not be food. And then you got to walk back. You see what I'm saying? First of all, yeah. let me just stop real quick because the, the Mabasa, Mr. Kevin Bledsoe, Mr. Don Harris, I mean, these are my dad's best friends. These are my, these are, these are the guys who I got to, they've been doing it. They paid, they paved the way. And me and my, my, my uncle Don Harris. And so to be able to literally be in my dad's footsteps, where the first school, um, Manasse Mojo, they painted a memorial of my dad on the side of the school. On a, in, in one of the classrooms and, wow. and, and, and it was and the kids were crying and then when they saw me they I guess I looked like them they, they when the kids embraced me it, it so many this was just day one I was there for a couple of weeks they went out the gate they didn't wait and um but the impact everything that we do here it means so much more every, every single dollar here goes so much more over there. You know what I'm saying? That's why I appreciate my man Badge of Honor leading the charge. You know what I'm saying? Just in what the community is doing. I appreciate my brother Bobby Bonds serving our country. You know what I'm saying? Just doing the above and beyond thing. My man, my my veteran, both my veteran guy, my man AC and the B. I mean, people that truly fight for freedom. I mean, we could talk football and we can the Bears, that's like it's it's a hobby. We don't have personal yeah. stake. We don't have personal stake in the Bears. It's it's like, but at the end of the day, when we leave the game, that's why I love the barroom network. That's why I love the bar flight tailgate show. Cause it's a, it's a, it's a global home for all Chicago Bears fans to come together, but we all bring something from our personal lives that can add value. And so what you got bad? I don't want <laughs> well, so I mean, so you talked about that first day, man. And you know, your, your experiences going over there and, and seeing those kids, you know, each day you got to partake in, in what they were doing. And, you know, in your time there, how, how did seeing them each day, you know, change your perspective on what you thought this was before you went over there? It was kind of like, for me, Badge, it was kind of like seeing what my childhood, my father's story, my, what my dad's story, because he'll always tell me my brother's. He'll always yeah. tell us, "Hey, this was going on. It's a whole nother world over there," I, and I and I and I and I mean this in the most respectful way. We are treated as kings and queens over there. It is it is literally KB. Everybody everybody on the show. First of all, every single one of you all will fit in. That's one. That's one thing. Human engagement is encouraged, Bobby. It was so good to see people don't look to shy away from human contact. Yeah, and no matter one the the one the one thing badge. I know coming from America how we're living here, but badge mm -hmm. when you go over there, you wouldn't be able to tell because they're so joyful. Wow. They are so wow. freaking joyful, bro. You wouldn't even be able yeah. to. They don't know they're living bad. They're right, they're right. doing whatever it takes. They don't make excuses, and it's like it's so many things that us Americans, and I'm so proud and I love this freaking country. And I served it proudly, and I'll do it again in a heartbeat. I took two oaths to protect and defend this country and a, and a vow to always take care of the sick and the injured. And I don't have to be active duty to do those things. But going over there, seeing how people appreciate the small things and watching them live it out. But badge being on a beach and having somebody walk up to you and say, hey, I knew your dad. What? Dude, I, I mean... I, I, dude, what you, everything you were posting when I saw that, dude, that had to be just absolutely amazing. Somebody that knew you're coming up to you, just probably, I mean, that you and your dad, you can tell, you know, yeah, they're like spitting like images of each other, man. Yeah. And so <laughs> he, him, I'm sure that's how he knew it. So him, I mean, they had to just like, Pour out the feelings had to just pour over you, dude. Bro, it was because it was because not just they knew him, but your dad did so much for my school. Yeah, your dad did so much. He did so much for this stuff that I knew he was cool, but like going through this process, and if you all don't know, 
Um, actually, May 8th will be the anniversary to where he went to be with our Heavenly Father. Um, and so um, um, he battled cancer. He battled cancer. He was a warrior. And um, but he I, Bobby, it's like finding out your dad was really Superman. It's you like, already knew that, man. You yeah. already knew that. <laughs> yeah. But it's just like when you're going through it, you just like when you're going through his as a power of attorney, you're going through it. I'm like, what? What? Oh, you you got you were part of the Justice League. You part of the Justice League. <laughs> and I'm like, but he was doing so much. And like, I don't know if you guys saw this one clip. Some things I I what I was able to post was like a small percentage. Cause I was so heavily embodied with the spirit. I totally had a Black Panther moment, KB. <laughs> totally had a, back, a Black Panther moment. I was gonna like, say, you ain't know your daddy was King T'Challa, huh, bro? He, he was <laughs> over there doing the damn thing, man. I, th just watching some of the stuff that you posted, the interactions that you had with people, man. It's, you are truly a blessing on this earth, bro. Your whole family line, and that, that's coming from the heart. Y'all did work, man. And you continue to do it. Y'all, you... What you do, it's the essence of what your father was. You know what I'm saying? Me, you had talks. You told me how what your father did. He, you can't imagine how proud that man would be of you. Yeah. And I need you to understand that, bro. You, you said stuff and you've done it. It's a lot of people that say and they don't do because a lot of people are about talking. You move in silence. You'll give the tip and say, you know what, man, this has to be done in the community. This has to be done in the world. Next thing you know what, man, you, you get on Instagram. This man's in Chicago in, in neighborhoods that are filled with gang violence. A week later, this man's in, in Mombasa on the beach yep. with children running around. I can't tell you how blessed I am to know you. You know what I'm saying? And I, I know I speak for everybody in this panel, man. Absolutely. It is, it is, it is a blessing to know you. It is, it's it's you're you're an amazing individual. You show it every day. And I'm proud to say that you're one of my friends, man. I say mean, the next of, mirror that they're gonna be painting is gonna be a you. Think about what you just like what KB just said, man. Like we all came together because of this show. Like we were able to to meet Tyler because of this show, you know? And then Bobby and I got to meet him in person at uh, the Giants game in New York. And, you know, like to now, I mean, that was three years ago. Wow. To now look at where, where we are today and what you're doing, Tyler, and the impact that you make every day. Every day, man, you're impacting somebody's life positively. It, that's exactly what Badge of Honor is all about, man. And you're living it every single day, man. So much praise, so much respect for you. Nothing but props to you and your whole family. An inspiration that, that you are to not only us. I mean, the comments in the chat from every, everybody in the chat, everybody that got to see your social media and the videos you were sharing and posting was such a blessing, man. And what an experience. And I'm telling you, man, someday I'm going over there with you, man. Someday I'm going over with you, man. So I get to experience that with you. Just, I mean, it would be the most amazing thing in the world to be able to do something like that, man. Huge props to you, bro. Fam, and then, and Badge, and I want this to be known for the Barroom Network community. Thank you, KB. Thank you, Badge. My brothers and sisters, understand something. I'm nothing special. I'm nothing special. I serve an amazing God who empowers me to not live in fear. That's, that's the key thing here. I'm blessed to be around people who don't make excuses that just show me how to be the best version of myself. It started with the military, but then it started with my association. I can't talk about a Mike Labou or Omar Powell. I can't talk about a Jordan Ellis. I can't talk about the servant leaders that I get to be around. My amazing church, Cornerstone Church here in Maryland, Badge. Because it's not like Africa or this. It's about what we get to walk out every day and wherever I'm at, that's where the blessing goes down. 
when I get done with this phone, with, when we get done with this, I might just go to the gas station because it's somebody out there. You know what I'm saying? That's my mom always said this. There's, there's somebody in the back of a classroom that has a cure for cancer, but because they're scared to talk, we will never know it. And that's wow. what happens when we slow down to go fast, what I, which I learned from my mentor, when we just seek to understand, with the, which is the mark of a true leader. It's not about us. John Maxwell says, if it's lonely at the top, go back and get other people. And I'm just blessed, Bash. I'm not, it's not me, bro. I get to be around <laughs> good, I get to be around good examples, bro. And mm-hmm. I just don't live my life in fear. And it's it's totally it's 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 God. I just I gotta stop and say, yo, fellas, we're not I'm not talking religion, I'm talking faith, which is different. I'm talking, I'm not checking a box about go to church. No, this is the church right here. This is the bar flight tailgate show, and we are we are diehard Bears fans, win, lose, or draw. But we are united through common grind, and we are united through thought process that we are here to pick up one another. We're not just here for each other when the Bears win or better the Bears lose. We want you when the Bears lose, don't go home and get drowned in with alcoholism. This is about suicide prevention. Inject peace into your life. I had an amazing leadership conference these past two weekends. And if you haven't heard of Icky Johnson, go, go, go look him up. Go look up Icky Johnson. I saw him live in K- Kentucky a couple years ago. Just look, look just Gary Newell said it. Your, your, your destiny is found in your routine. And I had to change my habits. I had to change the things that I was doing, Badge, because I'm a, I'm a single dad and a, of the most beautiful daughters you will ever see. And that's what it's about. It ain't about me. My dad was doing all these things. He was making an example for me and my siblings. My baby says Jazz, Josh Jordan. And so my daughters, Badge, Bobby, you, all you dads know. All you dads know. Yeah, that's what it's all about and right there. I love seeing, Bobby, how you interact with your daughters. Badge, I love how you see you at, interact with your daughters. You know what I'm saying? KB's always have his, his kid on the show. You know what I'm saying? And so <laughs> it's all about the example that we can leave behind. And so it's not about us. How can we set up our families? And so do what I like, do what I do, not just what I say sometimes, but being able yeah. to walk it out. And so I'm so freaking honored to be a part of the badge of honor heritage. And just I want to say thank you. But as it's not about Tyler Ellis. I'm a son of Amos. I'm the son of Amos Ellis, and I am so proud to be his son. I'm so proud to be my father, to be my mother's son. My mom, two-time breast cancer survivor from Jamaica, the strongest woman I know. I, I'm just, I'm just very, very grateful. And I want to share this with you guys real quick because I literally just picked this up. I thought I was gonna be late, but I brought this back from, from, from Africa. Can y'all see that? Oh, man. There we go. Wow. Oh, Can y'all see that? Dude, that's, that's awesome. awesome. That's awesome. And it was about supporting my man Titus. Shout out to my man Titus in Mombasa, Kenya. Um, Supporting supporting your fellow man. Over there, mm-hmm. it was about entrepreneurs. Understand the average adult over there makes $6 a day U.S. Mm. Wow. Wow. You see what I'm saying? And so the Mabasa Kenya Relief Initiative, what they're doing, anybody can help. It's not, I'm not special. We're thinking about going back in August. I'm definitely going back every March. But you can sponsor, like 150 bucks a year can set, can pay for a child's entire school year and uniform. Mm. Right. These yeah. small little things. You see what I'm saying? And so, like, I think I'm about to return. I think I'm going to re- return some Jordans that I have bought because it's like, at the end of the day, what's the fo- what's the goal? What's the mm-hmm. focus? For me, it's to build God's kingdom and hope and pray for a bear Super Bowl. Those are the things that I like. <laughs> <laughs> those, Dude, those, I, those that prayer ain't been answered. <laughs> <laughs> but God's kingdom, bro, and that's why I'm so freaking grateful of the Barroom Network, the Barfly Tailgate Show. I know the fans are happy to have you guys back. I mean, it's just like it's bigger, it's bigger than us. And like Mike Tyson said, everybody got a plan till they get punched in the face. But mm. what I learned in my IT and my and my medical background, prevention is cheaper than repair. And if we can get in on the front of a lot of causes and programs, there's a lot of kids who don't have to live a life that they're living. 
our children should be able to stand on our shoulders. Our ceiling should be our children's floor. And that's why my daughters will inherit no debt. Because I'm outcome focused on what can give somebody else a better life. Every- Listen, Tyler. <clears throat> You said twice, you said twice, three times, I'm no, I'm nobody special. You are, man, because it's about the influence. It's about the example that you are for other people. And there's so many people out there, maybe listening to this, watching this, or just seeing some of the, the content that you post on the internet that don't have the influential figures that you had growing up. And you are that to them. So, you know, it's, it's yes, you're a human being and, 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 and nothing physically is different, right? But what you do has such an impact on other people and uh, that shouldn't be lost on you. I think all of us just today, right now, just listening to you probably will do something better today because of this, right? Just because of this conversation, whether it's just in thought, whether it's in practice or whatever it is, it's because of this interaction. So don't, don't, don't say that again, that you're nobody special because you are. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I, are, and everybody, all of us know that, man. And all the listeners know that everybody knows Gaines and, and, and you know, Gaines' personality and, and like just the like you're probably one of the well, you probably are like the best infectious thing in 2020. Like, because you know like, <laughs> the way that you, the way that you like you know just the demeanor, man, and the way that you you know get other people on board and 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 spread the positivity, man. It's just it's something that's drastically needed, not just on you know on damn Twitter or, or whatever. Like it's needed. It, it's needed everywhere, man. And, and then to, to follow up with the, not just the positive attitude and, 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 you know, the mindset, but to, to go out and, and, you know, go over there and actually provide additional funds and additional interactions. And, and, you know, like even, even if it wasn't funds, right. Just to let the kids know that you fucking care about them is something huge for them because it's not like what they like for them. Yeah. It'll be tangible, but it won't be tangible. Like as in here, put this in your pocket. Right. But in the long run, it's tangible for them. And I think what makes them more like even a bigger impact is just interacting and, and seeing their faces and then them seeing your faces, you know, your face and, and everything like that, man. So Gaines, you know, man, like it's nothing but mad love and respect, dude. And like, you know, to those are the types of things. And that's why I told these guys earlier before you got on, like, those are the types of things that I like to look at on Twitter. Right. And I like to say mm-hmm. like all this other toxic shit is what drove me like to be like, I'm done, man. Like whatever. Mm-hmm. I told badge. I was like, dude, I'm, I'm taking a I'm break. Not. I'm like, and, and <laughs> yeah. I might come back every now and then, but like, yeah. you're gonna have to hold it down, man. I told him if you tag me in something, you might want to send me a text because I got my notifications <laughs> off. You know, like, because I just got sick of seeing the 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 toxicity, man, and and all that. But to be a dude that's out there and and battling that and doing everything else that you're doing, man, we greatly appreciate it for everybody in the chat, and uh, and you know, if you're if you're not watching gonna watch the video or if you're not on video and you're only listening to audio right now on the bottom line there's a uh the website for the uh, mobasa relief.org uh so check it out it's www.mobasa relief.org backslash amos um and once you hit backslash amos i'm pretty sure you'll get there uh to do the rest of it i mean you probably won't remember if i say like tack l tack l but uh just just <laughs> check it check it out man and we'll we'll post it from the tailgate account today um and get that out there and Gaines, congrats brother badge of honor Hell yeah, Hell yeah, congratulations Gaines. nothing but you love know, brother greatly appreciate everything man Man, I, I so I so much appreciate it, Bobby. And as you guys know, and anything that I post, it's about trying to just raise belief and awareness. And I may not, if I'm not active on Twitter, you can follow me on Instagram at freedom underscore gains. And it's all about we about gains in every aspect of life. You know, we in the gym, Bobby. And so, like, <laughs> gains. Yo, you gains. ain't seen my chest on the new bar fly shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know my, man, I'm in the gym, baby. My, my man Bobby. My man Bobby has an epic. An epic push up, push up drill for you guys as, as oh, well yeah. on YouTube. But um, obedience, <laughs> obedience, obedience through faith. And my dad, he's a Chicago guy. Yeah. And like Bears, Bears, Bulls. I lived the '90s 
The Last Dance, I lived that with my dad. Those are the moments me and my brothers had with my dad in Chicago. And when the Bears used to lose, he was like, he was like son, son, calm down. They're going to get paid anyway. And then he would leave. <laughs> and then he, would, he would go referee. My dad, he he was a licensed official in Chicago. He refereed some of Derrick Rose's games, Anthony yes. Davis' games. I mean, wow. he was like, he was in the Chicago community. Black theater in Chicago, Amos Ellis, tons of commercials for DirecTV. I mean, that's an Emmy. Him and Aldo probably know each other. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> so, like he, he, I just, so moving around, but always serving, always serving. Him and my uncle Don Harris, my, my uncle Darnell Forte, just seeing Mr. Kevin Bledsoe, just seeing the example. For Anyway, that's why I just want to make sure it's not about me. Badge of honor. At the end of the day, more than Tyler Ellis. I'm the son of Amos Ellis, and I'm freaking proud. And um, I don't know what the Bears are doing, but I'm excited. <laughs> oh, hey, buddy. Nobody, Nobody, knows what the Bears Nobody knows what the Bears are doing. You should see some of the mocks we threw out. We don't fucking know, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I got to tell these guys, like, I'm not, you know, I mean, I guess we'll, you know, we'll, we'll pull it back over to football. But I'm not really – I hate doing draft mocks, man. You know why? Because – it's like a game, like, I don't know. It's, it's like, a, yeah, it's, and it's like, who knows? Like, mm -hmm. and when, when people are like, oh, that guy's trash. Oh, okay. Or that guy's release point is, is horrible. And his, his mechanics are garbage. Isn't that what they said about Mahomes? Well, here, here's like, what it comes down to in draft. What makes it so hard to mock you? All it takes is one team to fall in love with somebody. Look yeah. what look, the, the Miami dolphins fell in love with, uh, uh, what was that? To I'm I'm thinking back further than that. The defensive end they drafted Jordan oh. from uh from Oregon. They they loved the guy, so they moved up and grabbed him third overall, and he didn't work out. But yeah. that's all it takes is one person to fall. We saw right here Ryan Pace fell in love with Trubisky and his Toyota Camry. Shout out Toyota, that's where I work at. Uh. And, and and moved <laughs> up horrible. one freaking spot to grab his guy. And at the time, I was like, well, we watched Aaron Donald go off the board one spot before us when we grabbed Kyle Fuller. So I understand it. Yeah. yeah. But but that's Should what I makes mock drafts Shea so McClellan difficult. Shane McClellan and Chandler Jones now, or is this a bad time? I mean, it's, <laughs> it's the draft, baby. Hey, you know? I'll tell you one thing Shane McClellan did that uh, Chandler Jones never did. He snapped freaking Aaron Rodgers' collarbone. Hey, hey, that. hey, 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 that's not a the, victory. The one, the one thing. <laughs> hey, awesome. I'm ready for Aaron Rodgers to just hang him up and, and, and be on Jeopardy full time from that. Just go ahead and hang him up, bro. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> really. so look, at, this is this is the way that I've seen all this go down, right? If you look at, and for all the, uh, and Mike, I know you're going to laugh because I was thinking about this the other day. And and if you don't know, we've, uh, we've, with with what goal boys, Mike? Goal boys. Uh, we've been doing a lot of NBA betting and gambling, and we hit another one last night for over a thousand. So we're we've been collecting up these little stimmy checks uh, the last couple of weeks here. But uh, if you look at a GM and you try to you try to make his picks like a parlay, you're always going to fail because one of them are always aren't going to work out, or it's going to take a while. Whatever, he's not going to reach where he needs to reach. If you look at at each of his individual picks as a single bet you're coming out winning with Ryan Pace. Um, and that's it. You look at that Trubisky, sure, it didn't work out, right? It's a bust. Yes, he's gone. He's out of the organization. It is officially a bust. No coming back from that. You know what I'm saying? Those picks are gone. I get it. But if you look at the other picks that he's made, we have some good talent. The problem is how they don't we know how to use it. <laughs> how we develop that talent afterwards. And how do we continue to let that talent pay off? So it's not so much as in – Pace is horrible. I don't believe Pace is horrible. I know other people think that he's he's horrible and he should be gone. But what do you do with that money after you won the bet? How did you develop and, and stack that money into doing more things? And we don't develop our picks at all anywhere. Um, yeah, and good. Every organization has hits and every organization has misses, right? And if if there was a science to this thing, everybody that's ever been drafted in the first round would be making a Pro Bowl, and yeah. they don't. Right. Yeah. Like if you look at the last like I think the first round, probably more so than any other round in the draft, is as overvalued, if not more, than anything else. I mean, teams are trading yeah. first round picks or for uh, trading for first round picks, giving up assets in the second, third round. 
I started doing this uh, this week and it became way too overwhelming of a task, but I was looking at Pro Bowl rosters from the last like three, four seasons. What round were these dudes drafted in? Sick. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> the, yeah, I mean, it's a third round, a fourth round, it just kept coming up and, and, yeah. and very few guys in the first round. So like, go, let's go back to like this whole idea of like mock drafts. Think about it. We're putting things in perspective today, right? We got Tyler here with us, helping us put things in perspective. The amount of thought and energy that goes into the dumb exercise of fake draft picks. If that was invested <laughs> into doing good in the world, what a different place this would be, right? Like, I, I mean, I had that thought last week, and I'm sitting at the kitchen counter. Oh, I ran shit. like 74 mock drafts, and I'm like, what am I doing with my time here? Like, this, there's no value to this. But, you know, uh, I, I don't know. I'm, well, I'm with afraid. that, with that, let's throw up Mike, Mr. Mike Schaefer's mock draft. Oh, boy. And oh, boy. Uh, let's start off there and, and and see. So I think we got that thing. We're, we're pulling it up for you guys. We'll, we'll throw Mike's draft in here, and we'll – I know we got – what, we got four of them to go through. So – and we're going to get Tyler's opinion too. So let's let's rapid fire on these and kind, kind of get it going because otherwise we're going to spend like two hours just on this. So let's uh, let's not do that. Um, if, if, we got, if we got Mike's draft, let's go ahead and throw it up there. <laughs> All right, Mike, why don't you, real quick, just in case people aren't watching the video and they're just listening, right, why don't you hit who your three picks were, um, and and then we'll we'll kick it around the room real quick. <clears throat> yeah, first round, I've got the Bears um, fill in the void that uh, Kyle Fuller has left uh, gapingly wide open. Uh, taking quarterback uh, Caleb uh, Farley from Virginia Tech. Uh, my second pick is an offensive lineman uh, from Michigan, Jalen Mayfield. And then in the third round, um, I don't necessarily think he's going to slip to us in the third round at this point after the last couple of weeks. Uh, but I've got the Bears picking uh, quarterback Davis Mills out of Stanford. Um, just like all the rest of my mock drafts that I do on Saturday, on Sunday, I am redoing. <laughs> so I, 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 I could probably give you guys more reasons why I don't like those picks than why I do like those picks. <laughs> I mean, I like him, man. I, I like the cornerback, right? Like, we have to go up and do it. Um, it I mean, it makes perfect sense, right? And and I don't think that there's anything – like, if we ended up with that, I think there's promise. Um, you know, and, and that's just kind of how it, how it goes. Like, if we ended up with those three positions or the mm-hmm. – hopefully, you know, they wouldn't be a, a – you know, an Adam Shaheen. Let's take a guy who's probably not going to – Right. fucking go here but let's, but either let's way let's not say that name again please i mean please. he's <laughs> he he did a lot better last year i'll tell you that um but but to go from there man i think the the positional picks um are spot on i think it's what we need right and i think it's just up to the matter of where you feel um like the is the more important place to go you know yeah, it's about getting value too, right? And like, mm-hmm. I, I feel like with Farley, you're you're getting value, like, because he would go higher. He's he'd be a he's top a ten big, pick, not strong press corner, exactly. And uh, I'm just not confident in our cornerbacks right now. I think Shelley and Bill Dord did a great great job last season, sort of stepping in, but those are like slot corner guys, like for your long term. Yeah. And uh, does True Font stay healthy next season? He's getting older. He's not Kyle Fuller. You know, I, for me, I think it was just the recency of Kyle Fuller being let go that I was like, oh, shit, we have to fill that hole. But yeah. at the same time, it still is a pretty good need. Uh, or a that, pretty big that, need. That's one thing that worries me about that pick. I like Farley, everything I've seen of him. I like the way he plays. He, he's got – he's tenacious. He goes after the ball. He played wide receiver for a few years, so he has ball skills. But – the injuries, if you, and then if you look at our cornerback depth chart, you've got Jalen Johnson, shoulder injury. You've got Caleb Farley, back injuries. You've got uh, Trufant, history of injuries. So could we end up with Shelly and Vildor, number one and number two? And that's that's scary to me. I like those guys, but I don't. I wouldn't put them in that position. You know what I'm saying? They're they're fifth and sixth round picks, respectively. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in on Vildor, honestly, as a two. Um, I, I, I thought Duke played well last year, but I definitely think um, there's room to improve. 
Um, and I, I think you're, you know, these guys recognize, um, you know, what, what's at stake for them, including Jalen Johnson. Uh, Jalen Johnson is, you know, he's talking about it. He's saying, Hey, I'm QB, I'm CB one now. So I'm, yeah. I'm working my tail off and believe me, Kendall Vildor, Duke Shelley, uh, Xavier Crawford, all these guys, Trufant, they're all doing the same thing. Uh, you know, I, to I'd be frustrated with the organization if they went defense with their first pick. Um, To me, the defense, even losing Kyle Fuller, the defense is still probably one of the top defenses in the league. The offense, to me, has to be where Ryan Pace makes his mark in this draft, guys. And I love the Farley pick. I I do. I think he's he's a great player, but at the same time, you know, where do you, you look at the Lions last year since we've got the Lion fan in our chat? They grabbed Jeff Okuda with what their third fucking pick, and did he see the field last year? I don't even think he played a game, right? So, uh, you know, I, I'm okay if they do it, fine. Um, I, I don't think I'll love it because I think the offensive line needs help, and wide receiver is a position of need, and obviously, quarterback is huge. So, Mm-hmm. You know, um, I, I think I would be f- slightly frustrated if they did it, but I totally understand why you went that way, Mike. Totally understand. Yeah. And, and speaking of quarterback, skip ahead to the third pick, Davis Mills. Do you guys think he lasts that long, or do you think we have to reach in the second round? Or the more, the more I'm up? seeing, the more I'm seeing, I don't think he'd be there in the. Third I think, round. yeah, and I but think I want it to be a reach. So, and I told you guys, and we'll go to badges next, but I told, like, even with mine, man, all these people started dropping off the board. And I'm like, how would, what, what is the Bears organization going to do once these guys are gone? Right. And that was it. That's how I got to mine. And I was like, I guarantee, like, this shit is going to happen. We know Pace loves to trade up. We know that he, to me, the trade up is more of a panic button than it is a, a confidence in the player. It's like, wait, this guy's going to be gone. Oh, I need to do something right now. What do I do? Like, boom. And that's what I think we see this year, and that's how I got to mine. But well, go ahead, AC. With five quarterbacks probably going in the top ten, that's when you'll see that panic. Like, yeah. oh, man, these guys are going. We've got it. Because when there's a run on a position, that's when you see reaches happen. But this is also a – it's hard to say it's a deep offensive tackle class, but it's also a top heavy offensive tackle class. And if that makes sense, it's, you can get a starter third, maybe fourth round, but if you want a franchise guy, you may have to grab him first or like we just saw with Schaefer's draft second round Mayfield projects more of a guard from what a lot of people are saying, but yeah, I, and, and but I don't know. I mean, that's the that's the crapshoot of the draft, though. Yeah. Who's to yeah. this is going to be a franchise guy? Who knows? And we you know, know Ryan Pace doesn't have a poker face. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's let's move over to Mr. Ryan Badgley's draft. I know Badge has got to get out of here in a little bit, so let's let's go through Badge's draft, um, and then we'll we'll get your guys' thoughts on that. We'll start off with Mr. Gaines next. Badge's picks in the first round. He's got. Offensive lineman Tevin Jenkins, a big six foot six, three hundred and twenty pound mauler. In the second round, he's got the speedy wide receiver from Florida, Kadarius Tony. And in round three, he's got quarterback Kellen Mund. Man, life would be simple if Bad was in the front office. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be worried. I'm like, all right, bet it makes sense. It makes sense because. Badge, I love that. I, I, I truly love that. I felt like you, I, you, took care, you took care of the first one. You took care of the needs. That's why it's so unreal. I'm like, I don't see the Bears make doing things that make sense. It's like you, you, you want them to do <laughs> but that <laughs> And he didn't reach. It, Those are my – that's my draft. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, saw, I saw no reaches to take mound in, in, the, um, in the third round. It, that's a non-reach. You get a quarterback position. We know Andy Dalton's going to start this year. Andy may do some things right now. And so, like, but that is naggy proof, in my opinion, because no matter what, that tackle right there, Badge, that's a big guy right there. And no matter what. He's a freaking road grader. That's what this offensive line needs. 
is a yeah. guy that's going to road grade dudes. It's the Kyle Long freaking, you know, Olin Krutz before right. him. Like, that's what this offensive line needs is a guy that's just going to freaking – He's going to play to the whistle, and if he's freaking pushing somebody to the ground, he's going to freaking jam him into the ground when that whistle blows. He, like, he literally... Jenkins, to me, that's the – you know, our offensive line, that right tackle spot is up for grabs. Yeah. And, you know, maybe he comes in and he – maybe he moves. Maybe he can play left tackle. Hey, who knows? But if if that's – if he's there at 20, I think it's a mistake – to not improve your offensive line with a top 20 pick and a guy like him right there. You know, Tony, uh, you know, when I did mine, uh, you know, I did a bunt like Mike, I did freaking 40 different goddamn box too. And, you know, each site is different and mm -hmm. their rankings yeah. are different. So I tried to find a site where the rankings were somewhat halfway decent you know, Tony, I had him go dropping into the second round. Uh, in all honesty, I don't know that he really makes it out of the first because he is a guy that is a burner. Um, he can catch probably a, a curl or a hook and, you know, or a hitch and take it the distance. I mean, um, screen pass is Matt really good, offense. Um, And then Mond, you, not, you guys know, I was not high on Mond. I wasn't. Um, but then I watched a little bit of tape on him. I don't – I'm hoping it's not Matt Nagy that works with him. I'm hoping it's Flip um, and he can develop him. Um, I I don't love him, but he was there in the third round, and actually when I did my mock, Mills was already gone. So I kind of took what was there to me, the best quarterback option available, I guess, um, and that's what, why I went with Mond. Um, I don't know. In all honesty – I'm really hoping Ryan Pace puts a package together and is able to get up somewhere and grab an elite quarterback. I don't think it's going to happen. If he does something like that, watch him draft Kyle Pitts or some shit, and it would just fucking <laughs> great. Kyle you Pitts know. might be the second best player in this draft, but he doesn't. I, I get it. <laughs> but what we grab Cole Komet for? <laughs> right. You know, right. and Jimmy Graham's still well, on the roster. So Pitt, if you're targeting would... tight end. <laughs> Pitts would fill in that Jimmy Graham spot. We could just cut it. Yeah, yeah. B Badge, I just li I like the security that Jenkins gives us just from a protecting Dalton standpoint. Just just from a yeah. quarterback. It doesn't matter who it's your quarterback is if he can't throw the ball. Yeah. yeah. If, if, mm -hmm. if, if Dalton can't, if Dalton's on the move, we're gonna he's gonna throw interceptions. Like at yes. the end of the day, give give veteran give this veteran a clean pocket to throw to the open guy. Like let's just break this down to the simplest form. Throw to the open guy and score a point. <laughs> yeah, how many times do we see money, uh, Mooney running wide open and get missed? We, yeah, uh, exactly. But, well, it ain't like Dalton I, throws that much better of a deep ball than Trubisky. I think does. he does, though. I think oh, he does, though. I I swore I saw somewhere where he he maybe it was just last season that he wasn't that accurate, but I just, if you I give him a clean somewhere. pocket, if you give it him a clean pocket, he's better. But that Dallas offensive line had a lot of injuries last year. Right. Guys, and I want to hear you guys take on this. I know we want to go around. It's going to, it's going to come down to, first of all, I love that pick. Worst case scenario, I would be perfect with that pick bash. But the fact Appreciate of the matter, we, we, we don't know if Atlanta is going to take a quarterback or not at number four. And so that right. kind of, that, that's kind of where who's going to drop. Who's going to drop? Carolina doesn't need a quarterback anymore. The Lions – they will be silly to you just gave away you got a quarterback now. And so there's places that somebody somebody's gonna drop. Cause like you said, AC there's five, but not all those people need a quarterback. So there's gonna be so either the tackles are gonna drop or the quarterbacks are gonna drop. And that's yeah. what kind of depends on what the Bears are gonna do. Guys, yeah. I gotta drop. It. it was great to be back with you. Um, you know, looking forward to next week. Hey, I want to remind everybody, draft day, we're gonna have some trivia. So next week we're looking for a participant in some trivia. So if you want to hit up the barroom account, my account, the Barfly Tailgate account, if you want to get in on some trivia with the opportunity to win an autographed Allen Robinson uh, Barroom Network badge of honor football, um, hit us up, hit hit one of us up, and uh, we'll uh, we'll get you on for some trivia, and then you'll go on draft day. 
or for our draft show, you'll go up against our first competitor. Winner gets the ball. So I uh, hope you guys have a, a great week and uh, bear down. Hell yeah, Badge. All right, Badge. We'll talk badge to you later, better. brother. <clears throat> later, guys. All right, boys. So we got, we you know, we're digging into these draft things a little bit. And like we said, these mock drafts, a lot of the times, depending on where you go, um, they – the site, the site just kind of values players differently, right? Or, or mm -hmm. values what the team is going to pick differently. And, and that, that's why, that's why I told you guys, like, I really don't care for them. Um, but all in all, like it is what it is. And, and here I we are. like, I like what boy badge said there about the, uh, comparing it to Kyle long pick the way, the way Tevin Jenkins plays, uh, just nasty and you always hear people saying blocking people off the you know he pushed him off the field there is a play between tevin jenkins and joseph osai from texas where he literally blocks him out of the freaking field he pushed him all the way out the field so i like that pick and Kadarius tony uh you hate to say a tyree kill type player because tyree kill is so great but that's the way I see Kadarius Tony being in the league. You know, a little get just get the ball to him in space and let him do his thing. And then uh, Kellen Mond will be a. I'm not a huge fan of Mond. I feel I feel like he holds on to the ball too long. And there's times uh, that offense, Jimbo Fisher's offense, is very quarterback friendly, and we didn't see him improve exponentially throughout his college career. But when you're in that third round and you're looking for a – you got to fill a quarterback. We got to get younger at quarterback. Uh, Mon might be the guy to go with there. Cause, yeah, yeah, and in the third round, uh, I'm good in the third round. If you stretch in the second round to get right. mine, then I'll be upset. But right. I, I agree. I, I thought Badge's pick set was the best out of all of us. Uh, yeah. I also anointed him GM uh, the day that uh, his picks were released. Um, but I think, you know, Tevin Jenkins, so I, I did throw my Jalen Mayfield pick like literally out the window the day after, because I was like, oh, he's versatile. He can play guard. He's got a lot of ceiling. He's young, but you know what? That's not what we need. We've got those guys. We need an anchor. We need a guy that can play tackle for the next 10 years and eventually replace Leno on the left side. Right. So I, I thought he was spot on. I think if they go Darisaw or, uh, Vera Tucker from USC. We're still in good shape there too with the first round pick. But um, yeah, kudos to, to to Badge on that. I don't think Tony lasts. I think 52, I think this but. draft goes one or two ways, man. We either take a quarterback at twenty that we that nobody has confidence in, or we take a lineman at twenty and people are like, he can never be a left tackle. That's how this draft is going to play out. People are either going to talk shit about the lineman that we drafted at 20, or they're going to talk shit about the quarterback that we drafted at 20. I mean, that's um, funny that you say he'll never play left tackle because, I mean, my draft is coming up and yeah, I don't, yeah, don't want to give no teasers. but yeah. No, and but I think you know what I mean. Like, there's guys who almost every tackle they're, for the draft, there's somebody knocking them saying that he won't – that he – questionable uh, quality starter at the left side, you know, in the, at the next level, questionable at the next level, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. And I just think that that's how the majority of every tackle goes. Cause nobody wants to say that this guy is going to be able to stop your beast of an edge rusher coming at you. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and we'll, we'll tee up AC's picks here and then uh, we'll kick it from there. So first round, and I've been falling in love with this guy, the more I read about him and watch, tape or watch what other people have to say about him. Liam Eikenberg in the first round. Uh, I think he can really solidify. You plug him in right away at left tackle if you want to and cut Leno post June 1st and make some money back. But he's also, from what I've seen in mock drafts, now obviously so all it takes is one person to fall in love with this player and move up and grab him. But if, if a team like the Ravens who are looking for pass rusher or – the Bills, who have to fill that running back spot, want to trade up, and we make a couple of picks back and still end up with Liam Eikenberg, I think the furthest downhill fall is the Chiefs because they need a left tackle. Obviously, they cut both their tackles. Uh, so, I, so I went ahead and grabbed him in the first round because my general manager told me I couldn't trade back. <laughs> Aldo. 
<laughs> and then in the yeah. second round, uh, Christian Barmore. Look, this defensive tackle class is not deep at all. It's Christian Barmore and then everybody else. So the fact that he was even there at 52 is – it was it was insane. So I just went ahead and grabbed him, and it was I mean it's it's mock season. So just grab what grab the way it falls to you. Uh, <laughs> if 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 he's not there like I expect, I would probably grab a corner. Everybody on here knows that I like uh, Kelvin Joseph. I'm biased because he went to Kentucky, but I love the guy. And uh, if he's not there, Paulson Adebo from Stanford is another possible grab there. And then uh, in the third round, just like Mike. I grabbed, uh, in my opinion, the best quarterback that was there was Davis Mills. So I went ahead and got him. He's got injury concerns, but he ran a pro-style offense at Stanford. And uh, I think he's got the tools. He could be one of those guys that that won't even be there at 52 because of the tools that he has running a pro-style offense. And people just – there's there's the quarterback draft, and then there's the every other position draft. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I, I- I like your Barmore pick, and I don't like your Barmore pick because I think we need to draft a defensive tackle. But I like that you were smart about it, and you took the best player available, right? Yeah. And that's what that we always talk about, right, is not p- picking for a positional need. And so the fact that you looked at the, the board and he was the best guy and you took him, I admired that a ton. Um, I love Eichenberg, too. So as long as we're trading back, I think to get him, I think it's a little bit of reach especially if guys like Vera Tucker and Darius are still on the board, you trade back a few spots and you can still get Eichenberg, but I love him. I'm a big Irish fan. So um, let's, let's go. But I, I thought yours was awesome too. I mean, everybody's was good except mine. <laughs> oh, well, wait, we <laughs> haven't done mine yet. <laughs> we haven't done mine yet. And, and I went off of, and I'll, t- I mean, I, I think ACs is good too. I think there's, there's, like I said before, man, I don't really, hold any weight with any of these things, right? Like you see like thousands of them come out and you're like, yeah, okay, cool. That could work. Right. And I'm not, I'm not going to be like, I'm not going to be like, well, ran thousands of them. <laughs> yeah, I, I ran, I think I did four. Um, and that was just for this. <laughs> um, but you're not going to be like, cause you don't know what else was on the board at the time. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what else you saw at that time. And, and if we're, <clears throat> Are you doing this by what you think they should do, or are you doing this by what you think they will do? When Um, I grabbed Eichenberg, what was uh, Jenkins was gone, Barrett Tucker was gone, Darisol was gone, so there was a little run on tackle. I think it was it was between Sam Cosme and uh, Eichenberg, and I feel like Eichenberg projects more of a left tackle than Cosme does. Cosme, you can plug him in at right tackle, and he'll probably be good, and you can coach him up to possibly move to the left side. But to me, Eichenberg's a plug-and-play left tackle, and he could probably play right tackle if you need him to. So that's why I went with him and over Cosme. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I kind of think what I was – what what I'm trying to kind of get at, though, is do any of the guys that we've picked, if it's an 8-8 eight and eight season, does anybody save Nagy's job? Is anybody there as a promise for the future? Because you're running in with Dalton and you're running in with Foles. And then who's the, who's the, who's the, oh, this has got promise. Whether or not people, right. Who's your player that's saving a job. I, right. and then and you guys know whether or not I agree with it. I personally think that Ryan Pace is safe, no matter what. I don't think he's going anywhere for a long time. I think Nagy will be the first one gone. Um, Pace will get time and he i think pace is is like kind of married to the organization at this point um i'd be surprised if they got rid of him if he wasn't the gm they're going to move him up to a different position and then they'll bring in a different gm but i think pace stays within the organization um naggy i feel he's the one whose job is on the line right and 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 i don't know maybe that defeats what what i was saying but there has to who's your splash Who's your – this guy's going to make a difference player. Um, it seems like Darnell Mooney saved his ass last year, so we might 
uh, like a guy I mentioned earlier, Jalen Darden, that you can grab probably with one of those four or six round picks might be one of those players where they see him and say, yeah, yeah. We're, we're good for the future there. I mean, that gives he's a punt returner too, right? Isn't Darden? Right, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that I kind he's of – out of North Texas or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and great. that fills a spot that maybe like a little void if Miller ends up gone, right, and you mm -hmm. don't want to put Tariq back there anymore, and CP's now a Falcon. I mean, it's a smart pick, right, and it mm -hmm. fills the need at that point. I just think that they're going to try to come out and splash, whether it's a trade up, whether it's, whether it's, uh, you know, trying, and we seen what yesterday, um, what was it on first take? I don't know what it was on. It was on one of those, but that the bears were back trying to sent another thing over to Houston, trying to pull Watson again. Um, even with everything that's going on, they're trying mm -hmm. to get him now for less value, right? trying to offer up less and that they'll weather the storm for a year or that they'll weather the storm and see what happens. Um, so I, I don't know, man. I just don't think that granted, I would love for them to go out and go tackle DB, right? Maybe like, and then next BPA, right? So BPA mm -hmm. for all those, but middle linebacker, maybe somewhere, like, are we, mm -hmm. is, is Danny going to make it depending on who's the best ones next, right? Wide receiver, possibly like who's your best player available for those positions. Um, and that's what I would like to see. But what I think is going to happen <laughs> is coming right up. In Bobby's mock draft, he's got the bears reaching for quarterback Kyle Trask with the 20th overall pick in round two. He's got offensive tackle Walker little who was injured in 2019 and opted out in 2020, but he loves his potential. And in round three, he's got defensive back Ifiotu Milifanu, who is a long, lanky cornerback who projects as a starter almost immediately. Okay, Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let, let me tell you something. That would be the most, that would, Twitter would break. If that if, if if it went down like that, that would be awesome. It would be, I would love to see it because like I've heard so many different things about that quarterback, so many different things, and I love your stance. So if he's there, take him. That would I can just see Bears fans is going crazy. Yeah, and 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 that's what will happen, and that's truly what will happen with that pick. And this AC going back to your pick with Mills, I believe he only had eleven games in Stanford, correct? Uh, mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, only eleven games because of the injury. But I believe that um, the, the head coach said there is no Andrew Luck, but he was one of the closest things to it. And so, but we will be drafting Mills purely off possible potential. Mm -hmm. And is that, and, and so, but but so at that pick, I like the where you had him at. So it's not a reach. <laughs> yeah. With Bob, with, with with Bobby's guy, man, if he's gonna create. If, Oh my God. Yeah. So this is what I think. This is what I think. This is why. So this is what I think is going to happen. Bobby's dropping bombs. I think somebody's trading up at late in the first round and they're taking trash, right? I think that the, most of the quarterbacks be gone by then and pace goes into panic mode, man. And what do I need to do? Like, you know, like, uh, I mean, I had, I had a couple of drafts where Mac Jones fell to us at 20. There's no possible way that's happening. Like, I don't understand how, I mean, I don't believe it's happening, but Hey, whatever. Um, I like yeah, I like I Robbie's, him getting past the Patriots. Yeah, I like Robbie's comment. Trash teammates to go to his birthday party. Um, and and yeah, I get it. I mean, he's he. I believe he was a wide receiver, you know, before and and whatever, man. But I think I think this has pace written kind of on it, right? I like Trask, but I hate him at twenty. Uh, sure. Yeah, I hate. I mean, I would rather take a long term tackle at twenty. That's going to sure up everything. I just feel that they they're going to want to make a splash. So I see him taking Trask. Um, little is that's that's got pace written all over it. I mean, two years ago, this guy was supposed to, was said to be one of the top five picks in the NFL. Whatever. Then he gets a knee injury. Then he sits out. Um, you got Kuiper and all these guys talking about how he was the damn, uh, um, you know, like a sure thing, left tackle, right? Then it gets injured, whatever. That's got pace written all over it to where a guy will probably be there later on, but he's going to take him and he's going to take him earlier and he's going to get in there and, and get after it. So that's kind of what, you know, my thoughts were um, going, going. I don't hate it. it. 
And, yeah. and we'll see, man. I don't know. If they don't take somebody, I think that they're taking a quarterback in the first round, 100%. I get everybody wants a tackle. Everybody wanted Leno gone by now. Everybody wanted Pace, Pace and, and Nagy weren't coming back this year. Like, whatever, man. That shit is constantly wrong. Uh. <laughs> well, before we move on, uh, you talk about trading up for a quarterback. Everyone knows I love Mac Jones. And now – Last week, um, it came out that the 49ers traded up f- for Mac Jones. Uh, and I went on Instagram and Lewis Riddick was talking about why Mac Jones is a fit if that's the if that's the position they go in. And dumb me, I went into the comment section and the first thing I saw was uh, we see the same crap. And I'm going to go on a rant here about Mac Jones. I like Mac Ooh. Jones. I- I think three may be too high for him, but if that's your guy, go get your guy. But here's the two things that you see with Mac Jones. Number one, well, he was surrounded with all that talent at Alabama. Of course he succeeded. When Joe Burrow came out from LSU, look at the talent that was around him. He had three first-round picks at wide receiver, three uh, top offensive linemen, um, and and no one said a word about it. They just said – He's the best quarterback in college football. Go get him at number one. Nobody said anything. But Mac Jones comes out, and it's completely opposite because he went to Bama. And then somebody – and then the other comment, I believe Ravi or 4,000 Clover said it here in the comment section as well, is I don't want a quarterback from Alabama because they don't do very good. And you see the same thing about Ohio State quarterbacks. Listen, look at the tape and decipher for yourself because Texas Tech had the best quarterback that's in the league possibly right now. Who else has came from Texas Tech that balled out? Who uh, the, the GOAT went to Michigan. Yeah. That's not a quarterback factory. You, It's all about putting your quarterback in position to succeed and surrounding them with talent. Now, whether or not Nagy can do that, we have yet to see. But just because of – look at Oregon. How many busts did they put into the league before Justin Herbert came out and, and, and did his thing and won Rookie of the Year last year? You can't just look at a college and say, yeah, they've never done anything from there. <laughs> yeah. So they'll never do anything in the future. Look, yeah. just and – and I'm no, I'm no tape expert. I'm no scout. I'm not on draft on tap. <laughs> All right? That's that's a that's a completely yeah. different show, and I love that show. I love Neil. I love Danny. Even though Neil shat all over my boy Jamie Davis last week when he was going through inside linebacker, <laughs> we ain't gonna touch on that. But but I'm saying, don't just take the narrative that they went to this college so they'll never succeed. Or yeah. well, yeah, he had all this talent around him. Of course, he succeeded because in the league, you should have talent around you as well. The cream rises to the top, and that's what the NFL is. So why would you say, yeah, yeah? I mean, yeah, he's got he's got Waddle and Smith and 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 Najee Harris. So of course he succeeded. When you come to the league, you might have you know David Montgomery and Allen Robinson and and Mooney, who's who's playing well. I don't know if our offensive line is as good as Alabama's was, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I, I agree with you, man. I think like that's. It's a whole, like to say, well, this guy's from here, so he can't be a top tier. Like, that's just, I mean, it's it's just asinine, man. That's like, Mm -hmm. like, how the fuck does that even work out well? You know what I mean? And then, like, I think in the grand scheme of things, we know for certain what we're going to see on draft day, whether or not it's the Bears, right? We're going to see people overpay. We're going to see people fall um, for stupid reasons right people are gonna drop and then we're gonna see moves on guys that that now all of a sudden people are like oh my god how did how did they let him fall that far right Right. when when seven seven thousand mock drafts had this dude in the later round um and i just think that it's you know like like you said neil the guys in draft on that those are the they're the experts i don't I don't draft, man. I don't do it. Like what I do is after the bears get them because the shit's been fucking what it started with the whole Kyle Long's right piece. And then the Shaheen and after the bears get them, I'll go back and watch all the tape and I'll go back and, and spend time looking at the player then 
and and finding out whose birthday party he went to, Ravi. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but I'm uh, I'll 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 check it when it when it happens. And but do I like the draft? Of course I do. I love right. watching where the players fall and learning about the players and and doing that sort of deal, right? But to to kind of to to wrap it up, I think to to say a player is is no good because he's from a certain school is just it's it's kind of a trash take because whatever i mean it's, it's stupid still, I, yeah it's stupid i got a question for ac though so let's say mac jones gets through san francisco right and so atlanta's on the clock um how high are you willing to trade up and what are you willing to give up to take him it's difficult to say I don't know that we have the ammo to get to four. We're 20th. The Patriots need a quarterback. They're 15th. Uh, Panthers, yeah, they traded for Darnold, but they may still want a young guy for the future behind Darnold. So as far as getting to four, I don't see it for the Bears. I think the highest we may be able to get, the Cowboys are sitting there at 10, and we may miss – and you may have Trey Lance and Mac Jones sitting there. If they're there at 10, I'm thinking a first this year, a first next year, and maybe a third or one of those sixth this year. Let me, I don't let know me, if get let me ask there, you, but let me ask you something, AC. If you're one or all of you guys, if you're one of these other teams, so right now you're not the Bears, you're the team that has the pick, and the Bears call for the trade. What do you want? What are you well, I think it, I think it depends on it depends on what your needs are. If you're a team like like I just mentioned Dallas, they need a corner and they need probably offensive line depth because we saw what happened last year when they had some injuries. Andy Dalton wasn't able to succeed because he was running for his freaking life. And at 20, you look at the corners that'll be there, you'll probably have Patrick Sertain will be gone. JC Horn may fall there. Or if they like Caleb Farley a lot, like we saw Mike grab, that might be a that might be a position to trade back. I think you have to get over the Patriots. I think if Mac Jones or Trey Lance is there for the Patriots, there's no way they don't grab one of those guys. Yeah. Because they've got Cam Newton who he might do better with some weapons around him this year, but he looked like he couldn't throw the ball. He can yeah. run. You can run an option with him. But Trey Lance is a guy that needs to sit for a year or two. And But Mac Jones, to me, is ready today. He reads defenses. He's got a pretty deep ball. He has an accuracy. accuracy. Uh, he's not the most athletic. But if you've got a good offensive line in front of you, uh, you don't need to have a, a Cam Newton or a Justin Fields type player who can run around the field and, and, and chuck it deep at the same time. What I, what I hate about trading up is it essentially takes you out of the um, sweepstakes for Russell Wilson mm-hmm. next year or potentially mm-hmm. Deshaun Watson. So you're basically gambling. And I think we all know the track record of trading up for a quarterback. We obviously are one of those examples, but it, it rarely works out. So I don't like the idea of doing that. I'd rather reach and do what Bobby did, take a guy uh, that you have a fifth-year option on, as Aldo mentioned, um, in the first round. And now I'm, I, I still have a shot next season at one of those two guys if yeah. they're still available around the market. So like Andre just said, like trading back into the first to get him. Um, and I seen that, <clears throat> what, yesterday? I know. So we did these drafts, what, last week? Um, but – I seen that yesterday where somebody was saying that the Bears are going to trade back into the, the end of the first round and grab Trask. Um, I think for like, in all honesty, I guess it could still work out. Right. But trading back up again for another quarterback. Um, I'd rather shoot my shot now while I got it and, and, and go from there, man. Um, I don't know. Go ahead, Gain. Sorry. No, bro. I was going to say a couple of things for all of you. Bobby, you made some good points before your um before your draft, before your mock draft, because who's the future? Co- this is this thing about the draft, not so much the players, but the organization. Okay, one, we don't know, and I'm not so much into the draft this year because I don't know who my coach is going to be for the future. 
And I feel like this is a all in year on like assessment. Right. I do feel like Bobby. I agree. Ryan Pace will be there, but this should be a microscope on the on the scouting department. Are we are we picking best player available or are we filling needs? They always say don't draft at your emotions. Are we trying to win right now? Well, we're trying to win right now. Who are we playing against this season? We're going against the NFC East. We're going against the AFC North. Okay, that's the Browns, Bengals, and Ravens. We're going against the Arizona Cardinals, who are not the same Arizona Cardinals. They make some mo- serious, serious moves. Then San Francisco 49ers. The Bears got a lot of trash talk, but guess what? Solomon Thomas, who was picked above Mitch Trubisky, is no longer San Francisco. And so, and they're picking in the top five again. And so I know we're hard on the Bears, but there's other teams that's just as much messing up just like we are. What's the mindset? Are we trying to win right now, like Bobby said? Are we trying to – what's going to shadow stuff? What's going to save Matt Nagy's job? Because not only do you have to pick the player, they got to produce. Who's going to produce? And I've been hearing the Bears sent all these scouts to – didn't they send all these scouts to Justin Fields' workout pro days? Yeah. So are we waiting – is there going to be a draft day – bonanza that bears send some rg3 picks to move up to get fields because why would they market sending all of these scouts to fields is pro day and all the different things yes i want to tackle yes i want the fundamental things but to save matt Nagy's job yeah <clears throat> they have to splash dog they if you have, have a chance at justin fields yeah, I would trade. You've got to go get him. You've got to. You, yeah. We were talking about mo- trading the farm for Deshaun Watson, who, bless his heart, we don't know what's going on with him. He might be on the commissioner's exempt list. I'm not going to touch on it because it's all hearsay right now. Yeah. Or Russell Wilson, who is 33 years old. You want to talk about Justin Fields? Reminds me of Russell Wilson. The way he plays, the way he's able to – manipulate the pocket moving around and he can hit he's got accuracy deep yeah dude i've now, liked fields i liked Fields since this whole qb1 thing remember when he was in high school and they yeah. did the QB one thing so yeah. before we even touched the college field he was on there and and i think honestly for me and i think that shows you the kid's actual character like he was in high school and they're following him around and and watching right and i think that that shows you way more and- character not like Mm -hmm. then right and who he is instead of who he is pre-draft because everybody's trying to be damn you know the angel pre-draft nobody wants to talk about like people delete all their shit off of everything because ain't nobody trying to get caught up with stuff right but but i dude i'm i'm all for it uh for for fields and and doing it and i mean i think they have to make a splash man the bears have to make a splash getting these and I seen Ravi, you know, maybe a de- developmental guy in the fifth. Ravi, I think that would have been great if we did it for the last four years or the last five mm-hmm. years. But yeah. now, like that shit's already boiled over, man. Like we're it's too late in the game to do that. And I feel like for me, well, would I like to see it? Of course. Like I don't care. Risk it all, man. Put fucking five hundred down on black. I, it, it ain't gonna bother me tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> shit, that shit's over with for me. Like, let's see what we get, right? Right. But uh Bobby, Bobby, real quick. We and this was my concern, and Mike, you brought this up last year, in the last two years, two years, guys. We've talked about my not my dislike, but my I paid attention to the lack of man coverage that Buster Screen will play. So there was such a big need at the nickel corner, then the bears released our best corner. I'm like, crap. Mind you, we were getting – we would lose games based off of Aaron Rodgers completing on third down because our next corner could not cover. So now Devontae Adams is free to go do whatever he wants. The blessing is Detroit Lions lost Mac, um, lost those two wide receivers over there, and Thielen is by himself. And so – but still, at the end of the day, guys, we got to beat the Packers. I don't think Thielen's by himself. Jefferson. No, he's not. No, oh, yeah. Yeah. no yeah, retract that statement. Retract that statement from that record. <laughs> I, forgot, I, I forgot about that. I, I, I forgot about that statement. Yeah. I forgot about that statement. But um, but no, because my man Jeff, Jefferson, right? Yeah, killing it over, killing it over there. But the fact of the matter is, we have holes. So the reason why I was talking about this for, we don't have, we can't waste picks on developmental guys because we have holes to fill. Inside linebacker, nickel, 
Um, defensive line, is Eddie Goldman coming back? Are we one injury away from not stopping the run? And so if we're going to get guys that are, are not starting, then what are we walking into the season? Yeah, and I think – and like I don't mind the developmental guys, right? Like I'm I'm okay with that like in the later rounds, but – but if we trade, but if we trade up, Bobby. But if we trade up, yeah. But but look at for me, this is get developmental guys behind guys who are already studs, sure. right? Like don't do your offensive line like you've done it for the last couple of years, where you your your offensive line depth is free agents, undrafted free agents that you sign after the draft, and seventh round seventh picks. Round picks. Like and we we got doing? lucky. Yeah. Like, we got lucky that those worked, right? Yeah. We got lucky that these Notre Dame guys wanted to follow Eric Eastan oh, I know. to Chicago, right? Yeah. You can't count on that. Hope is not a strategy. <laughs> <laughs> but Point that's, that. yeah, that's Point perfect. That. That Put that on a T-shirt. Uh, <laughs> but, but, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't mind the developmental guy, but we need the developmental guys that are that – are, you know, I mean, I guess if you have nothing else, you have to kind of do it. But mm-hmm. you need the guys behind guys that are that are there to to do things. Uh, what did Angel say? Would you guys be upset if they draft back to back tackles? No, not at all. I wouldn't be. Now, would I be like? I wouldn't be upset, right? And I, I Angel, with you asking the question, I don't think you will either. But how is the rest of you know what is the the, the whole Twitter universe going to feel on back-to-back tackles and you know, how do we are, I don't know. I'm just saying it's like, not a, it's not a sexy pick. Cause it does. It's not, cause it's not a, yeah, it's, it's not, not a, a murder, receiver yeah. or a running back or whatever, but it feels a need. You probably aren't going to reach. <laughs> and if you, if you do it that way, you're not reaching for a quarterback either. So yeah. if you wait till, Let's say they wait till one of those four or six round picks and grab Sam Ellinger. Then you've got two tackles to go along with a a winner at corn at quarterback. Uh, but but and a lot of people love Sam Ellinger. Danny uh, Shimon from the from Draft on Tap loves oh, the yeah. guy. He's on the table. For years. Yeah, on the table for Sam Ellinger. Uh, but but yeah, if you go tackles the first two rounds then you're solidifying your offensive line for the next decade. How much I may, I may be wrong. Buddy, I, may, I may be wrong, brother, but didn't the Dallas Cowboys do something similar like this five, six years ago? Bef- and they did that. That was before they had Zeke. It was before they had Zeke. The Cowboys went heavy. And I don't know if it was oh, back yeah. to back, but they, the Cowboys had the best offensive line in the NFL for that period. And then Zeke came in and – Won the rushing title. Jordan Howard yeah. was like second place, second the, the year after. Yeah. But look, when the Cowboys line started to mess up, Zeke isn't the same Zeke. With all due respect, but what I'm saying is, when the, when the, to answer my, the question, they have like I would, six first round picks on their line, man. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Bobby. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, they were they were like they didn't they were like oh whatever we're good but that's Jerry right that's Jerry they, Jerry's like oh, whatever. How many playoff games did they win with that line? Yeah, yeah. right. Now that's another point. <laughs> that's, that's yeah. another point. It's like oh. I don't know all all this stuff. Like you, you, you're gonna you're gonna upgrade one area, and it's gonna sacrifice or compromise another area. You just have yeah. to find that balance. And the Cowboys so, struggled there. My my thing. One of, another thing that that uh, you know that I was talking about is say you draft a quarterback in the third round, right? And and Dalton gets hurt. Are we is full still on the team at this point, right in the season? Is that quarterback on your? Do you draft a quarterback in the second and third round, and then he's a he's a camp champ, and he's a practice squad guy? Because is if you still have Dalton and Foles, are you dressing three quarterbacks today? So are you drafting a guy in the third round, and and he's on the practice squad? Um or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, how are you? I think if you, you draft, a, I think if you draft a third round quarterback, Foles is going to be dealt. What well, they'll take whatever they can get. Yeah, I but he has Foles to. Foles has to approve that. Foles has to approve being dealt. He has a no trade clause. Yes. Well, I thought so. Correct me if I'm wrong, but if if you 
let's say we draft a quarterback in the second or third round. Um, second round, I think obviously, he's, he's dressing. Right? He's got to be rostered. Yeah. Third round and after, I don't know. I'm not sure. What are the rules around putting somebody on your practice squad and then other teams being able to make an offer to make bring up? Because isn't there that period where, where like basically the whole NFL can can sign guys yeah, that are being there's a there's a a twenty I don't know if it's twenty four twenty four hours, hours I think even if yeah. you have somebody on your practice squad though anybody can come up and try to snatch him. Yeah, so I feel like if you're drafting second round or third round, it's a guy that you want for the future. And so you have to figure out what you're doing with Foles, deal him. You can't cut him, right? That's needed yes. a lot of dead money. Yeah, and Foles is – I know Foles has got a – I'm pretty certain he's still got a no-trade clause. I'd have to look at it. If you're in the chat and you know, you know, enlighten us. But I'm pretty positive that he's got a no-trade clause in there. He does have – an, he had an opt-out bonus of whatever, whatever, if, if certain things happened – um, that he could opt out. Um, but I really, really want to go back. Yeah. I mean, and that's possible too, but I'm just saying like right now for, you know, for the, for the conversation's sake and for where we're at right now, what happens? Mm -hmm. Like I mean, what yeah. happens if we take a quarterback any in the third round, I don't know what the hell would happen. Like, all right, so now let's say let's say that does happen. Let's say we take a quarterback in the third round, right? And now you got Dalton Foles and, and your new quarterback. Foles goes away. Now you got Dalton and your third rounder. Anything happens to Dalton, and the pressure is on this kid to be the guy. Your third rounder is gonna get so fucking berated and beat down from every Sunday that he might as well pull a Mitch and shut the TVs off and get off of social media and go zero dark. Cause, cause it's, it's a bunch of assholes. Like people are going to go after not this, this city, not this you city. Know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I don't know, man. I just wanted to throw it out there to see like, uh, you know, your guys thoughts on it and to, to kind of throw this out as a topic because I don't know what happens. Yeah, I don't either, man. I mean, I, I think that but you ha you have to draft quarterback. Exactly. Right? So <laughs> I suppose it's just going to be something we're going to have to learn and see what happens or keep Dalton as, as uh, safe as possible. And maybe that's why it's so important that we take tackles high. Yeah. You know, and we, we've got guys that can uh, keep the pocket clean for them. But it's a great question. I don't I mean, have the answer. Protect we protected if, Bray a lot. Maybe we could protect one of these guys. If you're Nick Foles and you see Dalton starting, drafted a quarterback high, would you want to stay here and sit on the bench? Or would you want – the competitor in you has got to want to go somewhere to where you know you're going to play. Agreed. Agreed. But money talks. How much did he make this year? I thought he made like seven and a half million this year. I thought his contract went like way down, like seven and a half million or quick. something like that. I, just, I can Philly pull it up. Up Philly loves the guy. They're about to build a statue for him, right? Yeah. 100%. But they did sign Flacco this offseason, so maybe they're like, we already got our old white quarterback. We don't need another one. <laughs> you are funny. You are funny. <laughs> uh, let's see here. So this is what we currently got for old Nicky. Uh, base salary four million, signing bonus two point six, cap hit six point six. Wow, he's a six 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 six. That's his whole uh, that's his whole deal for he made for his next deal year. with the devil. Yeah, <laughs> that's the we're deal for next year. His, his cap his cap hit next year is all sixes. Um, but is that fully guaranteed? Is that all fully guaranteed? Dead cap is ten point three million dollars. See, it would that would hurt. There's no point to cut him. There's no point yeah. to cut him. Damn. So they they're definitely not going to cut him, right? He's got a potential out next year, um, and I mean I'm I'm not gonna I know there's a lot more in here, but I don't know about the trade clause. That's something that I would want to look at. But I think if you draft, then yeah, of course he accepts a trade somewhere else. Um, now the problem is there's a lot of money that needs to go along with that and go with him. And is somebody taking him as a trade backup with that cash stack? Um, you know, in post June or or whatever we can look into maybe that's a topic for after the draft and, and we see because like we said there's it might be it might be nonsense we might not mm -hmm. even need to talk about it bears might come out and draft a bunch of people and and who knows um 
Yeah, also true. Uh, you know, quarterbacks get hurt in the preseason. Foles might be a good piece to to move after that, right? I just yeah. don't know. I just don't know how it falls out, how any of that falls out, because we've kind of broken out the checkbook these last two years, right? And we bring in Foles, and we're like, okay. And then we give him this, this no-trade deal, whatever, whatever. And then we bring in Dalton this year, which already should should have smacked Foles in the face. Like, at this point, if Foles was that competitor and was was that guy that we're that we were just saying, he should have been like, "Yo, I want to trade." Like, what are you doing to me? What out of Chicago? Yeah, call. yeah. <laughs> like, but I I don't know, man. I think that that's the that's the case, and it's going to be interesting on all the other dominoes that fall uh, on draft day if they go out and do this, you know, or if they say they do take a tackle and they get a quarterback in the third. What what happens with all this stuff then? So, so I mean, that's just that's just kind of where we're at with it, man. You know, and we'll see we'll see who we get and and how long everything can go. Um, all right, what else we got, guys? You guys got anything else you want to touch on or, or hit up? Just one one last thing. If we're talking about quarterbacks, real quick, um, there's no way I was gonna let this slide. But um, shout out to my man, Mr. Trubisky. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> AC, let's go. I'm, go right. <laughs> you know what I'm, I'm riding. I'm riding with Mitch. I'm. I'm. I don't want Allen to get hurt. But if Mr. Biscuit's in the playoff game, I'm rooting for that guy. I wish him nothing but the best. And I'm actually happy he's been set free. I'm actually happy he gets set free. It's he gets to go somewhere. for him too. Yeah. yeah. Because you look at how they use Josh Allen using his athleticism, <laughs> getting him on the outside. <laughs> That's how we wanted Mitch to be used, and Nagy was like, "No, we're gonna, we're gonna just have him drop back and and throw." <laughs> again and again and again. Right. All um, right, guys. Well, let's uh, let's wrap this thing up. We'll kick it around. We'll go oh, around. Hold on. Somebody, somebody said something here in the chat. The Jim McMahon thing. Oh. Man. Now we had yeah. Fat Mike used Fat to be Mike, yeah. on on the bar room. Shout out to Fat Mike for he's he's booking some killer guests. And Jim McMahon said that the Packers are the best organization he ever played for, and Chicago is where quarterbacks go to die. And I feel like we would be remiss if we didn't touch on this as Bears fans. So now we have where quarterbacks go to die and where wide receivers go to die. But I'm guessing Ooh, where I'm where running Chicago. backs in line. But, Running backs yeah. and linebackers come to live. <laughs> so, I mean, Jim McMahon, to me, he gets a lot of love because he went to the Super Bowl on the back of a inc- the best defense in history. And uh, so he gets a lot of love for that. But he – and I know Dan Aguirre loves the guy. I think it's like his favorite player. But he was never – he was good but never great. If you're asking me the best Bears quarterback in history, it's Cutler. And a lot of people might hate that because he was such a polarizing figure. But say, I mean, say what you chest, Jim Jim McMahon. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I mean, wait, wait, wait. Time out, time out, time out. So those two comments he made on that podcast were separate. They weren't back to back. They weren't together. And do you disagree? Like, do you think that this the Bears organization is amazing? Like, no. We talk shit about them all the time. That's and why we have a think show. <laughs> at the t- exactly. At the time, I mean, when, when Jim McMahon was in Green Bay, they're a well-run organization. Let's not forget, though, when the Packers won the Super Bowl and he went to the White House after that Super Bowl, remember what he was wearing? His Bears jersey. His Bears jersey, right? So I don't think it was like a – it was meant as a diss to the Bears. I think he was just legitimately impressed with the organization yeah. when he was there. <clears throat> and we all can agree that quarterbacks – tend to not do too well in Chicago. So Yeah, and I mean, on the on the flip side of the – so this is how I took it, right? The flip side of the whole Green Bay is the best organization or, or whatever. You got to look at how he was as a player and, and attitude when he was in Green Bay yeah. and how he was as a player when he was in Chicago, right? In Chicago, he was the punky QB. Like, he's pissing off GMs. He's pissing off owners. You know, yes, like, <laughs> he's he's going against the grain on everything, and he's the punky – like, he's pissing everybody off. Everybody's putting his – he's putting his hand out. Everybody's slapping it. You know what I mean? Because he's just constantly misbehaving, right? And, and he's being ridiculed, and he's being reprimanded, and this and that. And – when you have that in an organization and then you have 
Walter Payton, Mike Singletary, Richard Dent. You have all these other people in that organization that the organization is probably hooking up. I mean, we've seen Payton's family still continue on with the Bears organization. So we can't say that the organization was bad, right? I mean, we've seen – I think Jim was just a punk-ass kid at that time. And the organization's like, yo, like, hey, dude, look, come here. It's punishment. Like, go sit on timeout, Jim. And, and we'll see you in a while. Like, Walter, sending the room service over, chill. You know what I mean? Like, and I just think that once he progressed and moved on with his career and, and whatever, he was older, wiser, wasn't so much of a, you know, like crazy ass kid anymore that he understood organizations and how they ran and respected what was going on in Green Bay. And, no, and he wasn't doing dumb shit, so nobody had to reprimand him all the time. Um, and I think – like kids, right? Like take take little ass kids. Some of your kids will be more mad at dad when they discipline them than they will, you know, but they're not mad at mom when she lets them like get away with that shit. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's just a childhood attitude or a childlike attitude at the time. And and he got reprimanded more in Chicago and he liked Green Bay better afterwards. So I, 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 it probably took a lot longer to say that than it should have. <laughs> 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 Um, Jimmy, I got I got a lot of respect for Jimmy, man. He was tough. He was half blind. Yeah, and he gave us our only Super Bowl. And sometimes when these when these streams come out, we never know how the reporters chop things up. Mike, I'm so mm-hmm. glad you said that. How they answer things. Those weren't back to back. You're right. They will just add things. They'll, they 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 want sales. They want sales. They want they Your want. Clicks. That's all. That's all they want. Mm-hmm. And so, I know he wouldn't purposely disrespect the team that he won a Super Bowl for. But that being said. I'm somewhat glad he said it because it's not a diss on the quarterbacks. It's a diss on the organization that puts the, the leaders or lack thereof in place to develop quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Because if, it could, if you follow Andy Reid, you're going to develop quarterbacks. You see what I'm saying? You, if you, and you, he's right. And I'm glad that he kind of said it not to die, but like who's going to Trey Lance, Mac Jones, who's going to develop him here? Who is going to develop him? These are the questions. That's why I'm like, man, do you do I want these guys to come to Chicago? Are we gonna get these moms, these guys in the development rounds? And they come in, we're gonna toss them in there. And because they don't produce the numbers on the field, their careers are now scarred. And that's how the NFL works as a business. You know what I'm saying? Mr. Trubisky is gonna have to live with all of this stuff for the rest of his career because of what the lack of leadership did for his career. Yeah, yeah, but on the yeah, on the flip side, if Trubisky goes up here to Buffalo, right, and and maybe something happens or, or whatever, if he shows out, it's gonna be how bad the organization is, right? And not how bad Mitch is. The problem is that like I, so there's a lot of that stuff that I just put off, right? I'm like, well, whatever, let's give the kid a shot next week. Let's see. And I think from like coaching perspectives, right, and 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 no matter what level, right, high school, whatever. We've all had kids or we've seen kids that like they'll shit the bed one game, right? And they're just they're just bad. But then this kid does the little things, does this, does that, and you know that he's that he has it and, and you're just trying to dig it out of him and get it, right? I think there comes a time where where Nagy was like, Hey, I'm I'm just not gonna get it. Like I whatever, I can't do anything more with Mitch, right? Maybe that's Nagy's fault. Maybe it's Mitch's fault. Who knows? Hopefully he goes and does great in Buffalo. The problem is he will always be considered a bust by Chicago fans no matter what. And even if he does good now, then he's more of an asshole than he was when he was here and not doing good. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I mean, which, which in my opinion would show, I don't want to say lack of imagination because Matt Nagy had, a, he was kind of unorthodox. But, yeah. it, I, it's a, but it's a, for me, it's a diss on Nagy more than it is on Mitch because he's in there with Buffalo. That organization is on an uptick. They've changed yeah. coaches. They've changed ownership. I believe one of the first female owners, if I'm not mistaken, for the NFL. For NFL yeah. they, they are on the uptick. That is Sean McDermott, if I'm not correct, from I'm from the Carolina Panthers over there. Diggs, they're, they're moving on in a big way. They just didn't have the firepower to keep up. with. If they didn't play Kansas City, the Buffalo Bills went back in the Super Bowl. Like, <laughs> and they saw value in Mitch. That set, and Mitch turned down some other offers. Yeah. And so that 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 kind of says something because I think Mitch has intangibles that weren't fully produced yet. And I just kind of was like his athleticism. And so, but that being said, 
we got to roll what we got. We're in Chicago. We're win, lose, win, lose, or draw. Matt, Matt Nagy hasn't developed a quarterback yet, guys. He was with Patrick Mahomes his entire first year, and that's the one thing that I was basing everything, my fan, my fan, because Patrick Mahomes, his rookie year in the NFL, he was with, he was with Matt Nagy. That it, Just learning. I don't – but maybe that's more Andy Reid now. Maybe that's yeah. more Andy Reid. And so I don't know, Bobby. I don't well, know. I, no, I agree. I think like so. Mahomes played what one game his rookie year, right? I think he played one game his rookie yeah. year. Yeah, the final um, week. And we all know that Andy Reid was the offensive coordinator, right? He's the head coach, but he was also calling the plays. Uh, Nagy called plays, I think, three games at the end of the season or something like that. So, so you're right. Nagy was the one that was in there working with him um, and doing it. Like he was spending the majority of his time prepping them and and whatever. Um, I, I think he has it, man. Right. I just, just because like, just because you're good, you're a good chef doesn't mean you're going to be a good restaurant owner. You know what I'm saying? Like just because you're, you're good at this or that doesn't mean that you have it, that you can put it all together when it matters. Right. Like, and I think that's where the issue is with Nagy. And, and I, I still believe he's a good, uh, like, I think the players respect him, man. I do. I think he's, I still believe that. But I don't think that he's a good offensive coordinator, and I, I haven't for a while. I think he's too – he doesn't build anything on top of anything, right? There is no progression of style. There's no progression of player. There's no There's no progression. Like some of the plays that they get that are big plays are the Madden style throw the bomb, let's see if they catch it, or a broken-ass right. broken play that, that just happens, man. Like we don't see methodical – Punch in the mouth, build, build, build. Like Montgomery, Montgomery, Montgomery. Ooh, play action to Montgomery and deep. You're like, you know what I mean? We don't see that stuff. Um, Bobby, that's Bobby, I'm at. Bobby, that, but that's such a great point. And that, and the the offensive coordinators that do that are married to that position. But in today's day, we are in an information age, instant gratification. So yeah. every time a great OC or DC has an amazing something year, they should be the next head coach. They should yeah. be the head coach. Head <laughs> yeah. coach, head coach, head coach. And then now with, with your, your craft, you were proficient at something, but now you've been spread thin. Now you're a leader of men. And yeah. you can't be creative into that one thing that you were a science thing about. You, you give that 20% of your energy now. Yeah, and, and you lose your direction. I think you lose your direction. You kind of you kind of get put into what you should be and you're trying to to chase what you should be or what they want you to be instead of being just what you are and what got you there. Like you don't have to get stupid, right? Like uh, call hire an offensive coordinator. Be like, "Look, man, guess I only call plays three times, but I'm a head coach now. Like, this is my game plan. This is what I would like to put together. And I thought that your style married up well with what I do. Um, so I'd like for us to build something collectively and, and and go from there, right? And and see what happens. But to say I'm calling the plays, that you ain't proven, dog. You're not proven. You you like you haven't done it. And I mean, granted, they they put up some yards and whatever, right? But there's so many questionable marks in there that I feel it's just, you know, I don't know, man. That's I think I think we're all just, we're all beating the same dead horse at this point and, and kind well, of. I, over I and think over. Uh, to hire a head coach, uh, I think you have to look at your top coordinators because if they're a good head coach, they're not leaving their job where they're at. So yeah. what? <clears throat> Are you going to retread someone who failed somewhere else? Or are you going to grab a Todd Bowles type player, uh, uh, type coach that, that built this really good defense in Tampa? Now, he had one shot at head coach before, yeah. but that was with the New York Jets. So that's like saying you were a head coach for the Browns before and failed because everyone fails there. I would love to see Todd Bowles get another shot at his head coach. And just like you said, Bobby, uh, building – Grabbing another coordinator. Okay, I've I'm a defensive coordinator at heart, so I need an offensive coordinator that knows what the fuck he's doing. And my defensive coordinator under me is probably going to be your top defensive uh, position player, like a like a linebackers coach or something. That's probably going to be your defensive coordinator, and you guys can build that defense, and he can 
then he learns from you and everyone learns it's it's a collaborative effort so yeah, yeah. Fans. i think <laughs> the, 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 two, the two most important criteria when you're selecting a head coach is probably has a track record of leading a large group of people and has a track record of success put those two things together and if you're not already a head coach you have to be a coordinator right and probably one that was successful recently so i don't i don't think it's it's rocket science that that's what happens but the you guys are spot on with the point that like sometimes that crushes something that was good like you ruined something yeah. that was good bobby you said earlier sometimes you try to be everything to everyone and it dilutes down s- certain things that you're good at or certain areas and th- and that's what you see i think happening with a with a lot of defensive coordinators that that kill it and then just don't have that same success at uh, at the head coach level um Tyler, you talk about being a leader of men. There's just so many intangibles that are involved that like you, I don't think you're always thinking of, or there's no proof. If this guy's never been a head coach before, there's no proof that he'll be successful at those intangibles. You take some chances and and sometimes they'll work out. You just hope that your team pulls the plug when it's time to pull the plug. Like yeah. I might need to stop talking right now, but I'm, I'm just going to keep going. And I do it all the time. Gonna, right, <laughs> the Bears, they'll just keep going with Matt Nagy. And, yeah. and, but you, you have to have somebody that's smart enough to know when it's, it's time to, to, to move on. And, and when it's, yeah, when it's time to pull the plug on themselves though, right? Like Nagy at this point should have been like, like he's got self, too much pride. Self evaluation, man. Like, hey, how, how have we done? And, and measure that stuff out, right? Maybe he is, maybe he's, maybe he has like a, a chart or, or like, Hey, at the end of this year, I want to accomplish this, this, and this reasonable goals, right? Not, not like bear fan goals. Like we need to be in the fucking super bowl. Da, 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 right. Reasonable goals. And maybe he's meeting those marks. I don't know. I'm just saying, man, it's, I think a lot of it though is self-awareness too, to, to come back and say like, obviously do you guys think, I mean, I know we said we were going to do shout outs, but before we wrap this thing up, do you guys think Nagy handed laser coaching the offensive uh, for those games? Or do you I think, think Nagy- someone in the front office told him you're done calling plays? Okay. And what about Mike? You don't think so? You think that somebody told him to? I think he's got too much pride. I think self-awareness is biggest enemy is pride. Right. And um, I, Matt Nagy strikes me as a guy that's just, he's a stubborn uh prideful dude i i I don't think that was his call i feel like this andy reed coaching tree everyone hires from it and it doesn't work out that's what it's what i've seen so far is it it's hard to say bobby because he has play card and duties back he's taking it back over for this coming year and so it's like i don't know this is kind of i don't want to say lame duck but i'm like hey bro if he's going out, he's like, okay, if this is my year, then give it all to me, and this is it. And so this is this is that – this is it. Yeah. And so, like, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. He's going yeah, out you're right. blazing. Yeah. And, I mean, if – can you – the part that bothers me, man, can you be like, hey, listen, front office, this might be my last year, but if it is, I'm going to call the plays. You know what I'm saying? And that'd, and that'd be like, yeah, cool, Matt. <laughs> Like, like Jesus! I don't know, man. Like, who knows if this works like that? But hey, I'm you got to you got to remember, Mike Tyson's offensive play call was, "Hey, throw the ball to Brandon Marshall." That was yeah, a yeah. play call. <laughs> yeah, I mean that was that's that went on for a long time up in Minnesota with Randy Moss. Like, hey, Don, Dante, we know you can't hit a slant, and you know, <laughs> and we we understand that part. But this is what we want you to do. Catch the ball and throw it as far as you can, Randy. <laughs> Randy, get under that thing, you know. And like you've seen it. I mean, that shit went on for years, man. But uh, who knows, man? It's it's quite possible. All right, let's. Any shout outs that we got? Let's kick this thing around the room. Let's start it off with uh, with the guest of honor. Let's start this thing off with Mr. Tyler Ellis, the badge of honor, guest of honor. Gaines, go ahead, brother. What you got? I mean, brother, the Barfly Tailgate Show is so dope to be back with you guys, man. This is so awesome. You guys are rocking. I know the Bears Nation, we're excited to hear from you guys all season. I'm going to speak this into existence right now. The Barfly Tailgate Show, if anybody wants to join me, let's go to Vegas. The Bears are playing in Oakland and playing in L.A. this year, right? I'm going. So if anybody's down, I'm like, hey, yo, why we're not? We're playing Bobby? in Vegas. Yo, I'm down. <laughs> I'll see you there. 
I've never been to Vegas before, but like, hey, yo, the Bears give me an excuse. So I'm going to speak that into existence real quick. But I'm so grateful for um for the badge of honor. So grateful for the, um everybody that's tuning in. Thank you for joining my awesome brothers. These guys are awesome. Thank you for taking your time out to join us. 4,000 Clovers, Ravi, all you guys are just give you give us your time. And so that's a truly, truly dope. Mabasa, Kenny Relief Initiative, all praise to you know who. And then I'm going to shout out all the shows on the network and see Red Radio. This is Dope Talking Bears because, as you guys know, I've been full Chicago Bulls mode right now. Yeah. And so check us out Thursday Thursday evenings at 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Me and my two brothers, Jordan and Josh Ellis, we're talking Bulls. We're talking passion. We're talking Derrick Rose. We're talking Michael Jordan, the greatest of all time. And so check us out. On hey, Jogging all- Patrick Williams being a bum. Cause that dude needs to step hey. his game up. I'll tell you that. He <laughs> had twelve just... points last night. <laughs> hey, yes, all of, all of that and more. And Bobby, actually, make yourself available. Keep yourself available, Bobby. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up. We need Dan and Dice. To, to, Dice needs to take over for Williams. Williams needs to come off the bench, and we need to do this thing. But you know what? Yeah. Doesn't matter if you win right now. That's why they protected everything. That's why all your picks were protected. So the Bulls are about to about to smarten up. But sorry for cutting you off, man. <laughs> Bobby, we're definitely going to have you on it sooner or later. But other, wrapping up the shout-outs, is thank you for Badge, Mike, AEC, KB. I just appreciate you guys so much. Everything you guys do for the network, everything that you guys are doing for the network, your, your creativity. First of all, all your all your, all your your videos for your mock grasses were dope. That was all. <laughs> that was all, although. All we did was send them names. Yeah. I was like, AC, really stepping it up. This is awesome. No, like, <laughs> I'm just a personality. <laughs> I mean, it's just my show, you know. I appreciate you coming on, bro. Yeah, it's just AC. It's, it's AC and a couple other guys. That's the name of the show now. <laughs> but besides that, that's, that's, that's truly all I got. Outside of that, XS Nation, we about these games heading to the gym later. Take care. All right, brother. Appreciate you. All right, next, Mr. Eric Current, AC, and the place to be, the Kentucky kid. This is his show, and we're just fucking here. What do you got, man? <laughs> uh, first and foremost, shout out to Mike Shea for getting the swag shop going. As you can see, uh, we rocking the same T-shirt today, Mike. I got the hat. Man, I, I, it, everything feels great. Great price. Man, if, if y'all haven't been on there yet, it's deepdishtees.com forward slash barroom, correct, Mike? And that'll and that'll get you straight to all the ballroom swag. And I love the stuff. I've already spent probably probably more than I should, but my wife's all right with it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> shout out to everybody in the chat. Just like Gain said, uh Ravi 4000 closers, JMNA, uh Angel in there. Man, the, the chat room was nuts this morning. Um going back and forth and everybody having their ideas and not, and, and, and I love talking draft. Like I told you guys, I, it feels like Christmas to me and you, I'm sure you guys can tell by my passion, my, when I'm talking about certain prospects that I like. So shout out to, and, and just like Ellis said, you know, he can't take credit cause he just gives God the glory. Uh, shout out to, the guys that I listen to, um, you got draft on tap. You've got, uh, you know, you, everywhere you look, you've got people that have different things to say about uh, draft prospects. And make sure you do your homework, unless you like Bobby and you just do your homework after. <laughs> after, after we grab our guy, then go back and look and see what That's people right. had to say about him. But I, I like to be informed about who he could possibly go after, and that's just. That's just my opinion. And shout out you know, to everybody on here. I don't look at Playboys or nothing either. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just read the articles. <laughs> what is, oh, and don't don't forget, Greg Gabriel is back. Don't miss it. Speaking 11 of scouts. Yeah. Speaking, I mean, of speaking of scouts. scouts. I mean, I can't wait. I do, I do enjoy the draft, right? I enjoy the draft itself and all that. I just don't, um, like Casey said, I don't. I don't really look into anybody past like maybe – 10 picks, you know, I'm granted normally everybody in the first round, I know who they are or I know what school they're from or where they played. Right. Getting into like, after that, some of them, I'm like, who the fuck is that guy? Right. Like, uh, you know, whatever. And, and some whatever. Of Pace's I, draft picks. I'm always like that. Adam Shaheen. I hadn't yeah. looked at him for a second. Yeah. And then like outside him. of like Illinois, Notre Dame. Right. And some of the teams that they play, then I'm like, if, if it's coming from a dude that they, or he's from a school that they haven't played them. I'm like, yo, absolutely no idea. 
right? Like, who's this guy? But whatever. That's just me, man. That's where it's at. Uh, over to Ms. Booty went to Western Kentucky, and I didn't know who he was. Well, you want to know something crazy is – Ewe Booneyway's father is a professor out in San Diego State University, and I knew him before we drafted Joel. So mm. either way, um, yeah, mind blown. But, hey, and that's – I mean, that's how it goes. Over to Mr. Mike Schaefer for shout-outs. What you got, man? I'm with you, Bobby. Yeah, don't listen to me. Listen to uh, Greg. Listen to Danny. Uh, listen to Neil. They've got a show, I think, coming up uh, again this week. They've had some really good guests. So if you have not listened to the last couple of episodes, go back, play that. Uh, it's really good stuff. But uh, shout out to Tyler uh, for everything that you do, for being a great example. Uh, and then obviously for coming on and, and spending valuable time with us to, to talk bears, to talk draft. Uh, I will uh, do everything in my power to be in Vegas with you for Bears Raiders yes. and Maybe more. If you're going back overseas, I think that's something uh, that maybe some of us could could get together with you on. Um, uh, what else? Uh, oh yeah, deepdishtees.com slash barroom. Go there. There's really cool stuff. And if you go to deepdishtees.com, you could click on the barroom link at the top of the page. So it's like the easiest thing to find. If you can't find it, uh, just reach out to me. Do whatever. And I'll, I'll get you there. But there's some really cool stuff. We're adding swag for uh, the Blackhawk show that the Parisi brothers do. Um, there's just some really cool stuff coming, and we're going to continue to build um, as the year progresses. So check that out. Last but never least, uh, shout out to my wife. Uh, she is not watching right now because she's completing her residency for a doctorate, of which um, she's been working her ass off for, for the last couple of years. She's got one more year left. Um, but she, uh, the, the, the residency is all remote. So she has, our house is basically a school right now. Uh, I'm only allowed to be in certain parts of it. And, um, <laughs> there was no way I was going to risk taking up too much bandwidth, uh, from the, uh, at home internet. So I'm at work right now in the, <laughs> yeah. the office. Uh, but shout out to her for, uh, everything that she does. And, uh, obviously everybody in the chat today, uh, thanks for coming out. Anybody that listens to this. Shout out to you guys because you make this possible. Absolutely, man. And congrats to her and, and everything, you know, um, and, and everybody, like everybody joining us, everybody in the chat, Gaines, you know, KB, uh, Badge, AC, Mike, like, you know, we, we took a little break. We were, we were off for a little while just to kind of, you know, retool some stuff and, 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 and kind of kick back for a minute and do our thing. But, you know, the excitement, it, it picks back up, man. And, and it gets, I feel like, Sometimes in the off season, we kind of, you know, are like the same thing over and over. And we're like, uh, and uh, you know, whatever, sometimes either way, uh, it's just good to be back today, man. And thank you for everybody who's joining us. Um, shout out to Mr. Aldo Gandia. Appreciate you, man. I think, I think Aldo's a little mad at me from my, from my Twitter sabbatical and, and whatever. I'm not, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not being anywhere, but Hey, either way, I'm, I'm sure he'll get over it. Cause he loves me like a fucking, you know, st- little stepchild um (laughs) either way man uh everybody who joined us we appreciate it we got a lot of draft stuff coming up um the draft show will be coming and uh and uh the draft on tap guys are going to take you through with that thing and uh we'll be on uh what i think the day after the draft was the plan um either way we'll set out a whole schedule check out everything going on though i mean these bulls shows bulls are exciting again like no matter what the bulls are exciting again um it was a time, right? There was a time where we were kind of like, uh, but I'm actually excited for all of basketball again, you know, magically, I guess money will do that. But uh, either way, you know, White Sox, they, they took taking a couple lumps. Cubs are back. Like things are picking Cubs back are up. Not back. Well, I mean, <laughs> we can't do yesterday. Well, like, yesterday we did yeah. great, but. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I'm just saying like everybody's on ball. right now. This is like, like, you know, one of the better parts of the season where you got football stuff going on and every sport is going on. If you're a sports fan, like to, to get something on. Um, Otherwise we appreciate everybody joining us. I don't think I forgot anything. Uh, Oh, nope. I'll talk to these guys about that afterwards, but either way, appreciate you guys joining us. Let's end this thing with a big old bear down. Bear down. Bear down. Bear down. Bear down.